What's happening, weirdos? This is my wonderful, fun, interesting, insightful chat with the wonderful, fun, funny, interesting, and insightful Josh Peck, who has a great book called Happy People Are Annoying. A lot of you probably grew up watching him on Drake and Josh. He's also on How I Met Your Father, Oppenheimer, which hasn't come out yet. He's also just an incredible and interesting and compelling individual. And I was so happy to sit down with him. Uh, it turns out, again, you'll you'll see what I mean by that as we get into the chat. But I was so happy that we got to do this uh, conversation. I'm so glad that you guys are here to tune in. Uh, before we get to it, just a couple, just a couple, just a couple tiny things. Go to PeteHolmes.com. I'm going to be in uh, Royal Oaks, Michigan this weekend, and then followed by um, Cleveland at Hilarities. Go to PeteHolmes.com. Based on how Cleveland is selling, this might be the last time I go to Cleveland. So swing by Cleveland for my farewell Cleveland I guess I don't sell that great in Cleveland tour, which is sort of a heartbreaker because uh, Cleveland was the date that I had right before the the lockdown. I was going to be in, in fact, I was in Cleveland when everything got shut down and flew back. So this is really full circle, but I just found out like some of the shows are like 10% sold, which is maybe because it's Father's Day, but I'm a father and I'll, I'll fucking be there. Come on, Cleveland. Anyway, go to PeteHolmes.com for tickets to every city that I'm going to be in, and there are a bunch of them. I also only have one Pete's pick up top for you, and you guys guys know it's Magic Mind. You know I I fucking, I I, I self-bleeped. I fucking love Magic Mind. Magic Mind is a productivity drink. It is nootropics, which is like vitamins for your brain. Uh, It's uh, adaptogens which help your body cope naturally with stress. And it's just a teensy bit of caffeine and a teensy bit of honey, which makes you happy. And I love it. It gives you like five hours of dialed in focus. They, they jokingly call it creator aid. Like we have Gatorade for athletes. Now we have creator aid. It just puts you in that flow state. There is no product that has changed my creative process more than Magic Mind, and there's no product that I've given away to my creative friends, to my writer friends, to my painter friends, photographer friends, to my actor friends. Anybody I know that uses their noggin and is doing something creative, Magic Mind is here to elevate your mood, dial you in, and get you dropped into that flow state. It's designed to be taken with your coffee. That's what the adaptogens are for. They round the edges of your caffeine intake that you're already taking. So you take it as a, as a, as a, as a chaser with your caffeine. Or if you're like me, I just took one because I was a little uh, groggy this afternoon. Just take it by itself. Either way, so many of my friends, there's Leela in the background, have been turned on to Magic Mind and absolutely love it. And I absolutely love it. I was passing, I, on my Instagram, I posted that somebody was um, fishing pretending to be my assistant or something. There's Val taking Leela out of the frame. And uh, I love that somebody in the comments said, you can tell it's not Pete because he didn't talk about Magic Mind. Well, fair play to you. I can't shut up about Magic Mind. Um, You should try it. It's a great way to support your creative process and support the show. Go to magicmind.co slash weird and use my discount code at checkout weird for a limited 20% off your first order. I absolutely love it. It's a huge game changer. So try it. Get into it. I'm sure I offer it to Josh here on the show. So all right. Hope to see you on my farewell Cleveland tour (laughs) or in Royal Oaks, Michigan or anywhere. Go to PeteHolmes.com. And in the meantime, enjoy this chat with the wonderful Josh Peck. Get into it. This is a nightmare, Josh. (laughs) I just said nice to meet you. (laughs) <laughs> and he's like, we've we've met. And I was like, where? And he said, here. He came here to do, I was on his, <laughs> I was, I was on, <laughs> it's a good up, good up, <laughs> solid up. And uh, and I'm like, where, where did we record? I'm thinking maybe we went to a coffee shop. We couldn't have been here. And he said, in this room <laughs> with the room. sauna yes. and then tell, tell them what happened. 
Um, and then 45 minutes in, Pete, Shut goes, up! <laughs> Pete goes, it can't be 45. <laughs> he goes, it had to be an hour. We're going to have to cut this soon. We're no! Gonna have to cut this soon. <laughs> and I was like, uh, yeah, 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 for sure. I, okay. I look, you're an upbeat and delightful person. Thanks. Do you ever run out? Of being delightful? Like, you know, just kind of gas in general. You could, you can't run your delightful engines and maybe mm. you're just kind of tired of talking, I guess. Yes, all the time. Meaning, yes, okay, thank you. Because if I said that, because I'm a very non-confrontational person, mm. uh, I'd rather eat the 15, do the hour, and then be like, but I must have been worried that we were flowing or something. I was like, this feels like a two hour and people do do that to me a lot. Which is Not fair. you. But because I have a, a a long form podcast, most people are like, "Well, he'll probably go two hours yes. on my podcast." And if I'm rested and in a good place and don't have a lot to do, I will. But like, I must have been so thin at that time, spread thin. You were. I must have been. But I am humiliated <laughs> and <laughs> which and is terrified. appropriate too. <laughs> yeah, you know, humi- I say this all the time, but humiliate same uh, prefix, same root word as humble. Mm, so right. it's good to be humiliated. I, look, I don't want anyone to be humiliated. Yes. But if you want to alchemize your own humiliations and go like, this is good, I'm being humbled. Because right. you know what I mean? Like, it's good to be humble, right? Is it that we are humbled, but then we, life humbles us, and but then our We're mind, humiliated. we <sighs> humiliate it. We humbling level it up. plus mind, humbling plus story is humiliation. Right. You're like, ah, this should have never happened to me. Yes. But humbling is like, this is, I was on uh, touring with um, one of my openers, Paris Sachet. And normally, you know, I got the pre-check and I'm trying to get in like all the fast lines, all the, all the TSA things that I could to be a fancy boy at the airport. Yes. And we were just in the longest line. There was no way around, there was no way around it. This airport was fucked every way. Yes. And she was just like, this is good, Pete, humbling. And I was like, she's right. She's right. So this story is worse. <laughs> I am, despite all my best efforts, not always as shiny and nice as I, and, and as um, generous or spacious as I want to be. You know what I mean? I get it. I, I certainly get it because I think your first instinct is right, is in the Rogan era of podcasts, yeah. it's possible, especially with comedians, that someone could say, this is working Let's we keep might going. go. Yeah. yeah, let's go and go and go. Which would be an impossibility in almost every other entertainment forum. Yes. Right? It's a set amount of time. There's no w- no world in which we're going three hours. It's right. insane. Right, 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 right. And you didn't sign up for that. And you were, I, I, I must know. Have. You said, though, it was crashing press time, and which that's means how I, I must have been, yes. I, that's how I think I got you. And yeah. I, I, not to project, but I'm like, I'm sure you were, like, you saw, okay, kids verified on Instagram. Got some followers. You are a Can't nightmare hurt. to me right now. <laughs> this is a nightmare. It's gotta be. This is a true and living <laughs> nightmare for me. Just because of how real it is. And that doesn't make me bad or the system bad, but it doesn't make either of us good. <laughs> like, me or the, meaning that is part of it. You get a cold call, some guy, you see they have a ton of Instagram followers. You're like, maybe it'll move the needle on the show. I get it. Because you care about it and you want people to see it. Yeah. At, around the same time in my life, I'm still in embarrassed and humiliated, he, humbled. I'm still humbled. You're humbled. Good humble. Mm-hmm. But at around the same time, I met a guy on that porch that we just walked past for the New York Times. I've told this story before, but I really would like to see what it makes you think of. Mm. I was on empty and I just didn't have, it wasn't that I didn't have like press training or something, but I didn't have what I have now, which is like, take the New York Times seriously. Yes. Because everyone reads the New York Times. <laughs> I don't. Right. But apparently everyone does. Because yes. whenever I do the New York Times, everyone would reach out. You know what I mean? For some reason, I just didn't take it seriously. And this guy met me on the porch and I was so tired. I was beyond tired. And I know you've been that kind of tired. I mean, zero. Yeah. And this guy was there and I was like, oh, for fuck's sake. Like, that's just how I felt. I'm not proud. I'm not too proud to admit it, though. I, I didn't want to do an interview. I turned it on as best as I could. And he, it wasn't a smear piece, but there were like a lot of like, the line that really hurt my feelings was like, I asked him if he wanted to get a coffee, which I thought was like, nice. Like, hey, let's go make this more, more good. <laughs> let's caffeinate ourselves. Yes. So you can get energetic about hating me. Yes. <laughs> yes. And he said, 
looking at me in the eye for the first time. <laughs> he said! That's rough. Yes! That's rough. And as someone who prides himself, I want to think of myself as generous, as gregarious, as connected, as present. And this guy's like, this guy was a dick. I hated it. He also got the color of my car wrong, which I, I found disturbing. Unacceptable. I didn't like it. On the failing he said New I York drove Times. a white SUV. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> the failing New York Times. Yeah, can't, exactly. Can't get the color right now. Didn't like it. <laughs> I didn't like it. And we've since moved, but he made it very clear where I lived. And I was like, what is this guy doing to Weird. Me? Yeah. No you know, gusta. Has anything like that happened to you? Tell me. What do you got? You have to, you, I actually have to be careful of false humility, which I think is important too, right? Yeah. Because I've- Wait, false humility is important or being careful of it? Being careful careful of it in those instances or just knowing what I'm capable of in that moment. Like, do I have the capacity to yeah. be yeah. my normal human self? Yeah. I, I remember someone once asked me to do their podcast over, over Instagram, much as you agreed to mine. <laughs> there was a bunch of college kids and I'm like, you know what? Minds of tomorrow. Let me give them a little something. Yes. yes. You're in that mood. And I do it and I get on and I was on a kid show for many years called Drake and Josh, which I'm very proud of because it's made a lot of people happy, which I don't want to talk about at nauseum, yeah, you know, at I understand. 36. Yes, I understand. And it's, and it starts with Drake and Josh and I'm like, I'll give him a couple. <laughs> <laughs> give, thank you. Because I've been feeling like the jerk that checked your Instagram <laughs> follow and said, yes. so you're doing the same thing. You're like, okay, I'm going to, but even, even different. You're like, I'm going to Stoop down yes. and help these <laughs> poor sons of bitches. Yes. Yes, I understand. So you go, I'll give them a couple. I'll Base give them a hits. couple. Yeah, yeah, we're not really friends or we are, whatever it is. I'm not even asking. I'm just saying yes. like you give them a couple and then you go on. And I went on and I, and then 15 minutes in, now I'm starting to shoehorn my other work in. Yeah. Because I'm like, I can't do, I can't do a deep dive into episode 216. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we yeah, yeah, yeah. Need, I need to move on and so do you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it becomes an intervention for them, yeah. their addiction to the show from the star of the show. It's like, guys, <laughs> this I thought it. I was your guest. I'm actually your life raft. Yeah. Stop it. I'm now redirecting their own podcast yes. to them. And you're answering the question you wish they had asked, by the way. And at 30 minutes, I go, we're done. Yes. Like In a lovely way, I said, sorry, guys. I'm yes. going to have to pull a Pete Holmes here. <laughs> ah! and, uh, As and it's then, known in the biz. I got to well, wrap it up. Here's the fun thing about life. You can play almost anything from both angles. You know, as a comedian, our job is to stick our heels into one usually and have yes. fun just defending one because there's two sides to everything. The other side of both of these stories is, is there anything more beautiful than a tired person just being like, look, I'm having a good time, but we have to wrap this up pretty soon. Like it's right. not, it's not, you're not Santa Claus in that moment, Yes, but aren't, you also a person, this is something Val, my wife helps me do with my family. My family will ask me for, for something. I don't want to give it. And then like, let's say it's a visit and I, I feel like I just saw them or, mm. or they were just here or something like that. But they're like, come again. And I'm like, I really don't want to do that. But then I get guilted in my own mind. I'm like, you should. And Val will be like, Pete, you are also a person that deserves love. Isn't it loving to yourself? Yeah. To say, you know what? I feel like we were just there. We didn't enjoy that. <laughs> like, right. let's, let's not do another one. That's a joke, but it's not really a joke. <laughs> let's yeah. not do another one so soon. Like she helped me realize you're in play as well. You think because you're looking out for your self-interest that your interests aren't as valuable as other people's interests. Does that make sense? Where's that, where, where does people pleasing stem from in us, do you think? I think, well, because in doing my research of you, I feel like you and I are very similar mm. and we, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like we were hammy kids. Mm. I was also a soft boy. <laughs> yeah. And I realized very quickly, not when I say manipulate, I mean, I was a kid looking for any control over right. reality. By control, I don't mean a Machiavellian manipulation of, of reality and, and like right. I'll split the profit. <laughs> it's not like that. No, a desire to feel anybody. safe. And I okay. wanted to feel safe. Yes. I wanted to feel safe. And I, and one of the things that makes me feel the safest is confirmation that I've been heard. Mm -hmm. So when someone laughs, you have a, a visceral, physical, involuntary confirmation that they heard, not only heard you, mm. which is, uh-huh, but they understood you. You yes. changed them. It's like you made them sneeze. 
And there's no child laugh. There's there's a pandering laugh that yeah. everyone gets, child or adult. Yeah. And there's a genuine laugh that child and adult can get. Yeah. So when you're a kid and an adult gives you the same laugh that they would give their peer, you yeah. go, I'm a peer. You did it. I'm a peer. You just gave me the chills. That's exactly what it was. Yes. You were like, I think I can. And when I again, when I say game, I mean figure out a way to work this system just to make me feel psychologically sound. Yeah. And if I could make my teachers laugh, you know, the kids are, Easy. I still feel this way. Even I remember being in a junior high and I was like, farts are pretty big. You know, the girls like, like a little bit more like this or like gross out stuff or, or rhyming or singing a silly song. I did an alpha impression. And this brings me back to like feeling similar to you. I just had that, like, I was looking for it Yes. outside of the house. And that that's not even putting down my family. I'm just saying like, I was getting more payback from strangers and I love it. And I still love it. Is that, do that, you relate? Tell me. That really, something you just said, I remember when I was a kid and I had like a wonderful, you know, gypsy-esque mom, like not Gypsy Rose, but like Gypsy the musical, right? Yeah. Like we're going to get it, baby. Like, yes. you know. And she was not, uh, uh, she was what was required of a stage mother at that time. Like she saw talent and, and ability in me and she poured jet fuel on it. Yeah. So it wasn't like get out there, but it was yeah. like, if you got it, I'm going to help. I've heard you, first of all, let me do this for you. You were raised by your mother. You're the product of a one night stand. I'm not being crass, right? It was like a one night stand. Yeah. Nine months later, <laughs> crazy little Joshy Peck. Yeah. And it's you and your mom. I also heard you beautifully say that you were like a startup. It's yes. like other other families are like corporations and there's upper management and there's seniority. <laughs> yeah. It was brilliant. I loved what you said. I'm just trying to spare you from having to say this Thank so many you. times. No. But you were the man in your mom's life and you were a partnership. Yes. And it's, and, and you said that, by the way, you said I was the man of my mother. That You're right. feels correct. Yeah. Yes. Cause I understand, you know, paging Dr. Freud, there's a blurring there that can be unfair on maybe you question mark. Yeah. I don't know with a single mom and an only child, especially in the realities of like eighties, self-made woman in a very much a man's world, a deep financial insecurity. Like there was no, as best she could, right. there was no sparing me from the realities of yes. like what our life was going to have to be. Yes. And I say in, in my book, I'm like, for all of us, the veil of adolescence falls at a certain time in our life. And we realize that life is unfair and like the realities kind of come in. It just depends at what age. Yes. And I guess it's the, called the wound. Yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. It's that's why they confirm Catholic children. I think it's seven. It, ah. Cause that's the first one. I'm not saying that's the big one, right? but that's usually when the veil starts to crack a little bit and you go like, Oh no, <laughs> yeah, that bird wasn't sleeping, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> right. that bird's dead and my food is dead and Nana's dead. Like all that yeah. stuff starts coming through. Yeah. And yeah. I, I think that was all. Uh, so for me, I felt that with my mom and I just had to elevate. I had to be upgraded to this role of co-pilot, like a, like a startup. Like sometimes she was the CEO and I was the assistant and yeah. sometimes vice versa. Yeah. 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 But I think about how, and my mom was older, right? She had me at 43. So now I'm 36. She's 79. Wow. And growing up, I had, you know, I had good pitch in school. I was like, um, I could sing and I was eight years old and there was the talent show. <laughs> And I remember like you thinking when I would see kids either do just a dance, yeah, they would dance to a pop song and or <laughs> listen to the delightful fire of your judgment. I was just a dance. I'm like, this is you're in the back smoking a, a candy cigarette being like, oh yeah. Hit me, baby, one more time. Yeah. The radio in it. Like you're like not having it. You don't it. say. Like, <laughs> yes. And you just and and we can hear your one foot tapping because you're wearing a tap shoe. You're, you're about to go on. My capizias. Yeah. And then someone gives you a bowler hat, and you're like, let's show them how it's done. Yeah. yeah I I'm so with you. Keep going. It was unacceptable. You, it was unacceptable. And the one level. And why up were they liking it? Why were they liking it? No, Why were they eating it up? No one should have yeah, liked this. Yeah. And then one step up was you did a song from Aladdin yeah. or Beauty and the Beast. I'm like, too topical. <laughs> <laughs> too Overplayed. Easy. Yeah, I can show you the world. Heard it. Yeah. Heard it. <laughs> Been there. Been there. Hated it the first time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're doing a Mencken classic? Great.
And she's doing the heavy lifting. So the I'm, songwriting's <laughs> doing the heavy lift. I'm with my mother, who was born at the end of World War II, who's like, you're going to go up there and either sing New York, New York, or make someone happy, the Jimmy Durante version. And I'm like, you're going to bring it down. Load me in, mom. Yes. And I would fucking bring down the house and think that's how it's done. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So a mom <laughs> who could have been a comedian, what had performer chops business and comedy i know that sounds sort of absurd but there's like a there's like a go get it yes. about it there's like a close and kill yeah like those things are close but she didn't have the luxury to like go off and pursue it but now she has this little dazzling boy yes. this razzle dazzle yes and she's like you you said it yourself she was like the good version of a stage mom that she was like i think i see genuine interest and ability and i'm just gonna tell them you don't have to sing from aladdin Yes. You can sing New York, New York. <laughs> and us grown ups will like it. This <laughs> bag of you. Are you oh, kidding are me? Are you kidding me? We had to transpose the, the sheet music to say, we're going to, I'm going to really vamp here. Yes, like, hold. you know, yeah, hold, hold during the bridge. Bees. Everyone's saying, and the mom's going like, <laughs> Yeah. You throw a cane to your teacher, they're not ready. It's the I had in the a face. cane. I did of have a cane. You had a cane. Yeah. I, I'm trying to remember what I sang. I sang, first of all, I did like WC Fields. I had a little bamboo cane and I go, get out of here, kid. You're bothering me. I don't even know what I'm doing. Yes. I'm playing an alcoholic, basically. <laughs> Beat it, kid. I'm hungover. <laughs> and, but I would sing those classics too, but I didn't have the the Broadway chops, but you did? I did. Did you remember what it felt like to hit that note in New York, New York, or whatever, or if you say the other one? Yeah, it... it was it electric and exciting, or...? It was... A, the, the most electric moment, I, I think, of my life, which set me on this path, was being, like, eight years old at a Jewish holiday dinner, and me just piping up in the middle of the dinner and retelling a joke I'd heard my mom say for oh, years. Oh, no. About I say oh no because I just love it. Yeah. So much. It's like I just realized the mashed potatoes are lobster mashed potatoes. <laughs> You're like, <laughs> really? Happy. Well, this just turned into a $30 side. <laughs> <laughs> but it's we're not paying. We're no. not paying. No, so it's a good surprise. <laughs> this is gorgeous. Nobody wants the $30 <laughs> side. Okay. So you wrote do you remember the joke? Yeah, it was it's a classic Borscht belt. Joke. You want me to do it? Yeah, I'd love to hear it. Okay, so it takes a little I wanted you to sing New York, New York, only because it made, you know, the vagus nerve is <laughs> activated when you sing. So me just going, it just made me feel so good. It so, does. Yeah, yeah. We're so you're welcome to do anything you want. <laughs> sing, I, dance. I remember there was, oh, it, okay, now I, I, it, it all comes flooding back. So <laughs> my mom would tell this joke and around her seven, six, seven-year-old kid, which was woman wants to get a breast enlargement. She goes to I'm dead already. Done. She goes How old are we? Six. Woman wants to get her breast enlargement. Oh, yeah. Or as I say, making the canteen a little bit bigger. Am I right? <laughs> Mom's got that good 2%. This guy knows what I'm talking about. And this is early 90s. Like breast enlargement surgery is cutting it's edge. Yes. Like your mom making her way in the business world. Murphy Brown was like science fiction. Yes. Keep going. She goes, woman wants to get a breast enlargement. She goes to Dr. Goldstein. And it's Dr. getting a little kind of <laughs> Jewish flavor, and I love it. People we're, are enjoying it. We're in Boca. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she says, Dr. Goldstein says, I have a different approach. Don't worry. You don't have to go under the knife. You just have to go like this. And if you get bored, just go, Mary had a little lamb, and come back to me in a month. So a month later, she's looking great. She's got like, she's, her bust has grown and she's walking around. Kid knows the word bust, <laughs> but like three levels of polite down, not breasts, yes. not boobies, bust. bust. Her bust is looking, dare I say robust. <laughs> yeah. A woman with a long ash cigarette, like she needs to tap it, goes, uh, and then it falls off. <laughs> yeah, just a Benson and Hedges. <laughs> 110. <laughs> <laughs> She's got a Benson burned to the filter, let me tell you. The ash falls off because she laughs just at that moment. I got 
got him on the hook. <laughs> this is you telling your other six year old friends <laughs> yes. the story of the joke later. Oh man, I'm like, I hear the ash fall. <laughs> I'm like, I would tell you guys, but you wouldn't understand. <laughs> of course they wouldn't. You needed to talk to other like six year old Jewish women. Oh yeah, yeah who exactly. had no boundaries. That's right. Right, because like the, the the fathers of my friends who were like in their thirties would treat me normally, which would be like, huh. Yes. And I'd be like, you don't get it either. You don't get it. You're disrespecting Can me. I also say, we're going to get back to that joke, don't you worry. Oh, I believe The it. men are threatened. I think they are. I think so, too. Women, there's something going... Look, not all women. Some women have all the different levels. I'm all about it. But I'm just saying, traditionally, especially it feels like in the 80s, yes. men would see a little shit like us wooing and kahooing and winning <laughs> over the moms and they fucking hated us. They didn't I really like think it. They, right? Yes. Am I right? And then the women, they were these bands, they're bosoms. That's the other polite one. They're just, they were just soft, welcoming bosoms that were like, look at little Joshy shine. <laughs> and they gave us the applause. <clears throat> the men gave us that withholding Ah, you won't win me over until you're on Nickelodeon, you know, right. and that drove you. Or I even, think. or even just like, or or you uh, um, ascend the levels of masculinity. Yeah, like, yeah, unless yeah, you're yeah, hitting home right. runs, I don't give a shit. That's right. I felt the same way. I still feel that way. I was gonna do a man's rite of passage thing just because I'm stupid. <laughs> But, and I said to them, I was like, let me ask you this. When it comes to like the feats of strength, because I'm assuming there's some feats of strength. Yeah. Is it like balance and lifting and shit? Because why is it always the stuff that you fucks can do? You right. know what I mean? Why is it always the scary stuff that you shits just so happen to be naturally talented at? That's Fuck right. Fuck off. Right. I can't do a push up, but I perform for 7,000 people. Eat a dick. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. still mad about it. Yeah. Like, I don't force you to come into my male initiation and write a tight 10. Right. Because I'm not a fucking asshole. But there, but culture was going like, you better learn how to hit a home run. I can't hit a home run. Yeah. But I'm cracking up the bench, you piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, why don't you try the balance beam, you fuck? Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, men don't do the balance beam. Yeah, that's right. Right, that's I'll, hard. I'll pirouette. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I wish I could do a flip, but I'll, I'll try. <laughs> yes. Yes, I can't climb the rope. Totally. But I can do a great thing about rope burn. I got a type five on rope burn. <laughs> but we're warped too, because when my wife does a beautiful job of reminding me of this, that I, I pander to kids in some respect. Like I talk to kids in a way I try, I hate, I, I never want to be that adult that talks down to them, yeah. but sometimes I talk to them in an appropriate way that reflects their age and where they are. That's right. And so adults- Which means you go, hey kid, this girl goes in for a boob job. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, you, Josh. <laughs> it's uncomfortable. <laughs> and I would tell you, them- You would talk to them differently. I, I just talk to them in an appropriate way for their age. But me at that age, I would think, oh, you don't fucking know that mm. I'm the man of my house. Mm -hmm. And you're talking to me at an appropriate age range for what you're seeing. But- Can and. I? I've brought that with me. Like my wife will tell me now at 36, like that guy's not disrespecting you. Yeah. But I, I yes. hold that with me still. I do too. Yeah. And that's where comedy came in. It was like, oh, you think you're, you're, you're stupid down to me? Right. You're stupid. Oh, oh, this guy's stupid down to me in the corduroy blazer. You yes. know what I mean? And you want to disarm them and win. And I had a little... I don't know if it's Oedipal or what, but there was something I was like, I'll win all the ladies yeah. and all the men are gonna go, that guy was a real gem. Like I, that was in me. I couldn't stand being condescended to or something. And I, for me it was, I don't know if I, I'm getting the feeling it was the same. It's because my mother made me feel like I was the most magical boy in the world. And I feel like she totally. saw me and I felt like she was right. And yes. I'm really glad. I learned the humility and, and I learned what I wasn't good at later, mm. but it sounds like you benefited mm -hmm. from that, which takes you to this joke. You're like, I can tell this joke. Cause your mom was the wind under your wings, right? Yeah. I remember, I, I remember when I got my first, uh, uh, the, I was on Amanda Bynes had a sketch comedy show, the Amanda show. Yes. And it was the thing that brought me out to LA and I was 13 years old and I'll never forget this. And I'm sticking it up real razzle dazzle. I am putting spinning bow tie energy. I mean, <laughs> this is, I am putting so much English on this shot <laughs> that the cue ball has come back and done a 360. Put so much English <laughs> on the shot. The cue ball came back and did a 360 is incredible. Yes. You're going, you're chewing the scenery. There's so many great terms for it, but you already did the best one. <laughs> you didn't know not to ham it up. I was like, this is good. This yes, is what they want. And I'll never forget the director yells cut and looks at me and goes, Josh. And he goes, 
He's like, you're really milking it. Right? So this guy's going for laughs now. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm like, first of all, what, what are we talking Wait, about? What is this? What yeah, is this? like you're uh, pulling the other base coach? <laughs> yeah. What you can we? just talk to me. You just fuck. tell me to yeah. slide, you, you fuck. Your wife <laughs> fucks, pops up from the future and goes, This man isn't disrespecting you. You're like, Not yet. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> right now he is. Yes. And, but I didn't, I was like, and I literally thought, and what's the problem? Yeah, exactly. I'm, I heard you say you loved Sandler, like Billy Madison. Yeah. Like a lot of our favorite actors, I, I'm just going to assume, growing up were over actors, meaning they weren't going for like a Sean Penn type close up. You know what I mean? They totally. Were, they were going for almost like theater it Gleason. was all, yeah it was it was huge gleason and and jim carrey yeah. still destroys me these guys that can sneak in and sell you a glass of milk because they know deep down you do want a glass of milk i feel the same way when i can get a crowd laughing at diarrhea or something and i'm like i knew you dumb fucks wanted to you just <laughs> right. won't let yourself yes you won't let yourself because you think you subscribe to the new yorker <laughs> bitch you subscribe to bon appetit i should have said a dumb <laughs> magazine i said another high class <laughs> bon appetit's pretty good okay it was fine it was fun to say us weekly you you're us weekly motherfuckers and you know it you're yeah. a steak at applebee's as yeah. joe Rosa <laughs> said to me this week y'all steak at applebee's oh uh, keep going please keep going so you put a lot of zhuzh so yeah so and but this idea that milking it is a bad thing. Yeah. I, I it was a breakthrough moment. I remember when I I I talk about this and I'm I'm jumping all over, but like at 26 or 27, I had like hit this plateau work-wise, right? I just felt like I had developed these bad habits. Yeah. And I could just tell like I could be good sometimes, but it wasn't consistent. Mm. And I'd been doing it too long to not be consistent. Mm. And I was tired of this feeling. How did you notice this? Reviews. No. <laughs> really? Was it? Or watching yourself too? Both. Both, yeah. So Yeah, I was just like, I could be really good or really bad. And I just was like, this isn't working. Can I ask? I know you're in the middle of something. I don't want to split it too many ways. But sure. it's like, was that, did you feel like you were like based on mood? Like I was in a good mood that day and I really turned it on, but I was in a bad mood and I couldn't find it? Or was it just the material or what What it was, made it inconsistent? It was two things. If if the the part was in my wheelhouse then <clears throat> I could find enough connection to myself where I could root it in something real because it was close to me. Yeah. But like the whole idea with acting, right? It's like, well, you have to be able to hopefully play somewhat a variety of character. Maybe you won't be Daniel Day-Lewis and disappear. Right, right, But right, like, right. you might need to be able to play an accountant. Can you imagine? Daniel, cut. <laughs> You're milking it. Yeah. I drink your milkshake. <laughs> How about just I drink your milkshake? You don't know? I drink it. Uh, that was a bit much. What do you mean by that? I my friend was on. What? <laughs> <laughs> my friend was on was worked on. There will be blood and said, I don't think I'm speaking out of school here. That in the middle of takes because he's so in it, but he also has a trailer. Yeah, and they're putting makeup on his face. Right. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> he yeah, would yeah. just say instead of saying like I'm going to go back to my trailer, he would just go, oh, I'm I'm going to go away now. <laughs> that was how he would say it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I'm going to go away now. Yeah. And I will return. Yeah. And when then he goes into an air conditioned <laughs> box in his 1898 <laughs> clothes and just sits there. Mm. Right. I also know a fun DDL, and we will get back to no every worries. single one of your stories. I just thought it was very interesting that on Gangs of New York, which only exists, in my uh, opinion, as a character study that led to There Will Be Blood. Yes. Right? Yeah. That whole movie, it was like when Daniel Day-Lewis was on, you're like, yeah! And yes. then when he wasn't, you're like, I don't really care about trolley theft. Is this good? <laughs> like, is this good? Yeah. It did, I know it took 35 years and $90 million, but is it good? Yeah. But anyway, then he was playing Bill the Butcher, and apparently in between takes to stay in that evil, like ramped up, amped up, violent zone, he would listen to Eminem. Yeah. How funny is that? He it's it's 1898, <laughs> knees weak, arms are heavy, vomit on his sweater already, mom spaghetti. Like, yeah. like that is hilarious. While I heard cut he would blast Eminem while butchering well, me. Yes. You heard this? I've heard this. Listen to Eminem while butchering meat outside of his, of his trailer. Or his place that he goes. Oh, yeah. Outside of, I'll be outside of my place that I go with Marshall Mathers. <laughs> yeah. Who won't be born for 200 years. <laughs> yes. That is, that's way too long. <laughs> but that is incredible. 
By the way, I've heard a lot of people tease the method thing. It's just as good. He's just as close as you can be. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I just want to go on the record and say, I know the other side. You can't be perfectly in character because they are putting makeup on your face. And I know you'd be like, what are these cameras? Mm -hmm. But he's just doing the best he can. And I respect it. I respect it. And here's the one thing, like you certainly hear stories of certain people in quotes giving, in my opinion, method a bad name yeah. because it's their process for acting and then it bleeds into their, and, and as you know, yeah. as if you are a producer, really, if you're the director or an actor on a set, you set the tone. And if you're having a bad day, yeah. it means there's a lot of people that are working on that set that are, that are going to have a bad day because you're yeah, having a yeah, shit yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there is a little bit, you have to be a politician to a certain extent and like be a leader and set the tone, which is important. Yes. And I think there's people who let that method, let, let whatever their processes bleed into not being that leader. It's true. They, they could use a little bit more people pleasing. A little bit, but yeah. you never hear that about DDL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you it never hear, gets in the way. It never gets in the way. Yeah, and yeah. people almost like respect it. Cause they're like, wow, he's working his ass off at this yes, thing. And yes. it doesn't get in the way of me. Yeah. Maybe we're not talking about the game last night. Right. Right. But who cares? It's this okay. is special. It's okay. I, I briefly talked to Paul Thomas Anderson once and he said, I think Joaquin Phoenix was doing something similar on the, on the master. And I've told this story before, but he said he'd just have Joaquin go around in character and then follow him and just film him. And, and I was like, it's a dream. Yeah. When if a character is always in character, that means you can film him at any moment. Yes. As long as he's not eating a bowl of Skittles, it's usable. Yeah. I like the lime. <laughs> yeah. The green one is my favorite. Have you seen the <laughs> uh, the famous outtake from The Master with Philip Seymour Hoffman? Oh, and, the fart? Well, no, with the menthol cigarettes. Yes. Yes. Minty flavor. Minty. And, and they can't get it out. <laughs> they can't. They can't. It's so, and, it's and, a joy. And you see Joaquin go, no, no, just do it. It's so good. Yes. And I Minty like flavor. that. Even then they're like aware, like, no, we're acting, but this is good. That's fucking A right. It's, it's using both. It's like when you're playing the guitar in a certain rhythm, mm. but then you're singing in a different, not, not, not rhythm, but like you're playing a certain melody and you're singing a different melody on top of it. I know that's just called music. But that's what an actor is doing too. Like you can be staying in the character that's your guitar. Yeah. But you can also be observing your behavior and watching the movie a little bit. And that's your singing. Does that make sense? Yeah, I feel that way. I don't know how you are. Uh, how are you? But you, uh, a lot of the things you've done, you're also producing. And so you have that extra hat. But are, are, how are you at watching yourself? I had to get good at it watching it on, on, on Crashing. because it, right. it was horrible season one. And then season two, you're just like, it's almost, uh, have you heard the term depersonalization? Yes. It's a symptom of a lot of uh, psychic, um, psychiatric disorders, actually. Like, it's a bad thing <laughs> sure. to suffer from depersonalization. But you can also have little bits of it. And I started feeling removed from that person to the extent that you mm. could be like, like I stopped going like, oh, I look fat or something. Like, That's I, huge. I, I, yeah, it, it took three seasons. But by the third <laughs> season, I was like, this guy is fat. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just kidding. But like, I just was like, That's what he looks like. Right. You know what I mean? And that was actually a beautiful, there's something beautiful about that. Just going like, uh, that's me. Instead of always seeing the mental image of what you think you look like, you really just saw your real self. Yeah. If that makes sense. And you got to, you got an opportunity. When I say forgive it, that sounds like it's wrong. I, I just mean accept it. You get to accept it. Yeah. Well, how are you with it? I'm, I, I can't watch anything that I, I never watch dailies and I can't watch anything till about a year after it's come out mm. because I feel like you ever look in a photo of yourself from a year or so ago and you're like, I look great or I just, I look fine. Yeah. But you know, the day after you took that photo, you were like, you ugly fuck. Yeah. Right. And, yeah, yeah. and you think a year later, well, I was so hard on myself. I think this all the time. For what? I had no idea what a piece of ass I was when I was 22. <laughs> Dude, all of us. I thought I was a little booby jiggling like weirdo. And I was like, that was actually as good as it gets. Yeah, hot, hot boy. <laughs> hot boy Holmes over there. I'm telling you. Yeah, and no, I, I think I think Judd Apatow is a bit about that, where it's like you, you look at an old picture of yourself and you can't believe how good you look. Yes. And you know when the picture was taken, you were like, I'm having a bad day, you know? Yeah. But you you weren't. And I'm that. And you're not right now. You know, like, that's sort of the lesson. Right. <laughs> you, in 10 years, will go like, wow, there was a light in my eyes or whatever, Yeah, it was you know? so much better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But the only thing I do, like, 
I'm working on this thing now and I had to do this kind of bit, this stunt where I fall into a table because things never change for old Joshy. Ah! You want another one, boss? People like it when former fatty falls down. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Make him fall like he used to. <laughs> yeah. You want another one, dad, <laughs> boss? <laughs> <laughs> I, dude, I've had to unlearn that. But I, I, I was doing this stunt, and I'm oh, we'll going. Get, we have to talk about food. Yes, yeah, we have to. I just I, because I'm an overeater, and I just want I want help. I want to just talk about. Oh, it. I'm here yeah, for keep you. Going, keep going, though. But I like that. So that's uh, I wanted to do it like three or four times, and like I've done certain things now, which is crazy. Like I played a U.S. Marshal in this in the Turner and Hooch reboot. Yes, for for like ten months, and I know that I'm not naturally athletic or certain things. So instead of having a director. Which is use, funny because I would cast you white polo, white shorts. You're in Dead Poet Society. <laughs> you're one of the non-thoughtful kids. It's the kindest thing anyone's ever said to right? me. I, I knew you would be, like it. I've been trying to be non-thoughtful <laughs> forever. I you would, look like the non-Ethan Hawk. Thanks, babe. You look like <laughs> you look like the one that might be like poetry's for for girls or something, and then kicks a rugby ball. I don't even know if you kick it. I was intermittent fasting really well for a couple of months, yeah. and someone on Twitter said I look sick, and I was like, "Fuck yeah, I do." <laughs> like, if sick is the goal, you're you, sick. Like you're you're like literally beast tongue. You're like you're swole. You're like thanks, bro. <laughs> like Thanks, all of, baby. All of the compliments for bodies are also diseases. You're ripped. Totally. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm bleeding out. <laughs> it's bad. I've ripped. <laughs> but I know when I watch it, like, I've had directors try to say in, like, the most, um, you know, just speak in, in, in these broad terms to try to make me understand what's wrong with me running yes. or me, like, throwing a punch or me going through the table. So I'm now dead. I go, I'm dead. just show me. Yeah, just show I me. I got to see it. And, and then I'll watch. I'll go, oh, you mean keep my arm down? Yeah. But, like... They felt the need. You're killing me right that now. That technical shit. I'm like, I can, if it's not about performance and more about the technical, Buddy, I can watch it. Just show me. Just show oh, me. Voice over. I go, just, just tell me how you want me to say it. I don't care. Yeah, I'm not, I'll I'm not disrespected. Can I put this to you? Because people like us that grew up uh, soft boys, and I'm not even putting a judgment on it. It's just like, it, I was an outlier. I was, I was in a small class and I was the heaviest. So that yes. made me an outlier. And I remember even getting to college and talk about body movement. I was walking towards the car and I was only friends with girls. Like I, I my whole life I've always just liked girls. That's I, I have more guy friends now. Mm. But anyway, in college it was all girls. And I'm walking back to the car and they're in the car and I can see they're laughing. And it's it's Josh, it's not a good laugh. <laughs> like oh. I can just tell. These oh. are my dear friends. Yes. I'm still friends with one of them. The other one's dead to me. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm walking up to the car and they're laughing and I got in the car and I just knew that they were laughing at my natural walk. Right. And they were. I've done I go, that. what were you laughing? And so one of them went, we were watching you walk and I just started going, dun, 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 dun. And I was like, ooh. Yeah. That's what, that, if I was uh, playing Bill the Butcher, I'd listen to audio of dun, 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 and I'd butcher a cow and I'd be ready. I'd be camera ready, man. Yes. Like with the rage would be real in my eyes. Do you relate to that? Like people like us, we get into the flay. I love physical comedy. I love flaying around. But isn't it strange that that stuff comes from guys like you and me that do look a little weird, weird. Mm. We don't look tight when we run. No. We're not Tom Cruise. No. We're not, you know, so does that, what does that bring up for you? 100%. I, I've never understood that too. Now I've married into a family of athletes and I just see <laughs> movement. It's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> it's unreal. I don't know why there isn't already the movie of you marrying into a family of athletes. My father-in-law played in the NFL for 10 years. Shut Maybe more. Uh Dude. And you show up spinning bow tie from junior high. <laughs> I'm literally like, throw it to me, guys. <laughs> it's so the bad. Classic, like, I wanted it to hit your face. I'm not going to throw it in your face. I wanted to throw it and just have it hit your face, which you and I would both do for the laugh. Of course. You're like, it's technically a stunt. Just do it. Just keep rolling. Stop. Yeah, it's fine. He is in the NFL. Yeah, he was in the NFL. And there's these wiry, muscle-bound people passing you lobster mashed potatoes, and you're like, this is a $30 side. And they're like, sorry, what? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Oh, my, my brother-in-law is 6'8". He played, he was QB1 at Fresno State. I can't, I can't. Do they love you? 
Yeah. Yeah. They love the hell out of me. Why They're not? Because I'm a different flavor. That's what I mean. I'm not a threat. If you showed up and you're just Chris Hemsworth, is that his name? Yes. Who needs another Hemsworth? We already got a Hemsworth. We are we the Hemsworths. We are the, we're the Hemsworths. <laughs> yeah. Give us that scrappy ham boy. Yeah. Yeah. Give us a ham. I say it as a ham boy. No, uh, yeah. I'm the scrappy ham boy. Like, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I am. Said, I'm the scrappy ham boy. <laughs> I am. I said it to my wife. I'm like, who would have thought, like, my wife's last name, her maiden name's O'Brien. I'm like, who would have thought that some hot-blooded actor Jew yeah. would have been the perfect one for you? <laughs> like, in this family. It's so perfect. Who would have thought? And then you're like, let me wet the reed on my clarinet. Give me a moment to summon up some saliva. Yes. Just another moment, dear. And she's over there just with a brisket. She's carving a brisket. It's so good. Wait, brisket was kind of Jewish. I meant doing something macho. I couldn't even think of an example. A yeah, a pork loin. <laughs> Thank you. Thank yes. you very much. Yes. Again, I, I grew up Lithuanian, not Jewish, but I, I feel such kinship. We had so many close Jewish family friends. Yes. And I was like, those were the only ones that like, understood Sarah let's not get too into it I'd, lo I'd love to say on the track we're on but like I just felt such a warmth and a connection to those types of families they understood the love and the conflict in the in the ways that it was happening in my house yeah any hoozle woozle where were we you married into athletes <laughs> well I'll give you a I'll, I'll button up two things we were just talking about with button the up. this guy's a podcaster I love oh, yeah. it nobody's ever buttoned up this is like, the most unbuttoned podcast of all time good. this podcast no, we'll make that <laughs> well I like the physicality part that too was like there were two revelatory things that happened when I went back to class at like 27 or 28 and and it was the first my first day back and like I'm pretty successful at this point, right? Like I've at least made a living being an actor. Yeah. And I get What's great about your career too. I know we kind of teased that I checked your Instagram followers, but that does open a certain doors, opportunities. And then also it gives you a number because you have like three point blah, 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 million subscribers. My dad could understand that. Right. You know what I mean? It's, it's like a way of going like, here's his score. And you go like, that's a big score. It's like the IMDb big, star meter. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, so people can understand. It's a nice thing. It, no, it's a good thing. And I, I remember going back and, and I'm doing my first scene in front of my teacher, so my teacher to this day. And she goes, she stops the scene and goes, Josh, who am I? And she starts walking around like this. Like with a hump in her back closed off she's like i'm you and i'm like well you didn't have to say that <laughs> like babe i know how comedy works who are these directors that are like hey dipshit <laughs> like these yeah. are all the directors you get this is what i needed my but you needed this my acting teacher was literally because i had spent so like i had been this weight in this shape for 10 years but it was so indoctrinated in me to close myself off, yeah. to make myself yeah. smaller, because yeah. I was so insecure. And to guard yourself, which is what the the weight was. And that, and I thought I was still carrying it. She's like, "You can't be strong, and and like what I want to see out of a man, mm. because you're so you're making yourself so small and weak." Mm. Mm. She's like. Now, uh, we're going to have to do more work, but she's like, why don't you pull your shoulders back yeah. and put your chest out yeah. and see just that, what it does for you. Right. And that was massive. And the other part with the comedy stuff was, and she had said this, because I remember going like, I'll take your drama help. I got the comedy stuff <laughs> cornered. Like, don't need your help, darling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, back it up, lady. <laughs> it's my bread and butter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and she goes, no. <laughs> 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 she was like no. She said, no she she goes you have and she's in her 70s too right she's like i know your mother like i i i feel like i know your mother and i know what she showed you growing up and you watched all that billy madison happy gilmore shit you also watched the honeymooners and just like and you know three stooges like borscht belt big loud schmaltzy humor she's like but we're in a different era. We're in the office yeah. type comedy that it's so nuanced and yeah. subtle. She's like, um, it's almost like you're, the way you approach comedy is almost out of fashion. Like mm. it's not, so she's like, it's not bad. I love that shit too. And it probably can work in certain scenarios, but it yeah. would behoove you to like 
hone this kind of comedy yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, You're and, wearing a double-breasted zoot suit to a nice you know, tuxedo <laughs> right. party. And you're like, this was cool in 1992. Yeah, with Zoot, riot, riot. <laughs> <laughs> you're to... well, where's your hat? <laughs> yeah, you're wearing the hat from the mask. <laughs> it's bad. Maybe. Maybe throw on a tuxedo. <laughs> I love this. This is Grace, by the way. It was those uh, friends that have the 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 gumption, I'll say, mm. to tell you you have blueberry in your teeth instead of those that's right. phony ass motherfuckers that just laugh at you the whole lunch and you don't even know why. That's just another dun 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 dun. dun. <laughs> she was saving you. She was saving me, and that is the sign to me of a great teacher, right? Because. You don't have to be a musician to know that it should go dun 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 and not dun 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 dun. Right. Like your everyone's ear goes, that's weird. Yeah, 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 yeah. But only a good teacher can be like, let me show you how to fix it. Yeah. And and not spare your feeling. Right. Because she could have been nice and been like, I like what you're doing. It's really interesting. I I'm that way too. Like we wanna I told this before, but John Sarouf, who's this great actor out, out of uh, Salem, Massachusetts, he, he just directed me one day and he kept noticing that I was crossing my arms and, and he called it my fear hole. He was like, you're covering your fear hole. Yeah. And, he, and I was like, <gasps> like, I felt so exposed, but I did feel like, I later wrote a stand-up bit about it. I was like, you, you protect your stomach because that's a kill stroke for a lion yeah. and your neck is a kill stroke as well. So you protect your neck, put your shoulders up and you... You hunch over. This is literally what you do if you're on a bus that's about to crash. Right. You know I mean? And that's what we were doing. And that's what weight is as well, to a certain extent, is putting on... Gabriel Iglesias did this podcast, and we talked about how he loves Iron Man. And I was like, look, I'm not trying to be funny, but, like, isn't it funny that you're... <laughs> isn't it funny <laughs> that your favorite superhero is is somebody who built a suit around him? And, like, didn't you kind of build a suit around yourself? Right. We were talking about having done the same. I wasn't othering him. I was like, I did the same thing. Like you want to put on padding. It's almost like the world is too much. Definitely. Right? Yes. It's overwhelming. Are you feel like a sensitive person? Like it's all coming in? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. And even now feeling like I've done the work to feel free of the, perhaps in the, the more negative parts of that level of sensitivity I feel, especially as you know, like having kids now, it's like, I'm, I could go in a second. Yeah. Like, what do you mean go? I could cry. Yeah. I could like, I'm so emotional all the time. Like yeah. I keep it in check cause I'm not crazy, yeah. but like it's right here at right. all times. Right. And I'll be amazed the, the small things I'll cry right now talking about, I mean, this is a beautiful thing, but I was watching this show, um, emergency NYC on uh, Netflix. You haven't heard of no. it. It's reality. It was, it's basically just follows Lenox Hill hospital and all the different facets of it. I'm giving it away, but it's, what can you do? Fine. There's this guy. If you don't want an emergency NYC spoiler. Skip ahead. Yeah. This two is minutes. I'm going to call this two minutes. Go watch something boring like game of Thrones. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like something fake. <laughs> yeah. There's no dragons in this. I see. Yeah. I like reality. Yeah, okay. That's right. I like, you know, I like failure. punched up. <laughs> Splice together fast paced reality. Yeah. Enjoy your red wedding. I'll be over here with lupus. So, <laughs> another lupus. Is this a rerun or is it just lupus going around? Yeah, it's a lupus awareness month. <laughs> Shout out to real thing. Um. <laughs> Poor lupus. If it was called anything else, it does need It's one to, of the funnier disease name. names. It need, it I don't names. know even, I don't even know what more, it is. It does. It needs loop. a better publicist. It has loop. You can't be fruit lupus. Is and that what we're doing? It's rough. Does Toucan Sam have fruit lupus? Is that the, <laughs> right. is that the ref? <laughs> I have loved ones who are not going to love this bit. <laughs> Do they have lupus? <laughs> yeah. And where does loopy come from? Is that from lupus? He was real loopy? Could be. I don't know. Lauren Lapkus, does she have lupus? <laughs> could, could, be. Yeah, could, could be. Keep going. Um, so you, you get emotional. Oh, there was like, and this level me, but maybe it would level anyone. There's a guy who had been on, had been in kidney failure for like a decade and been on dialysis and needed a, a kidney donor badly, could not get it on the list. So finally, it, and he's literally got like six months left mm. and he was in the NYPD and he was like, I couldn't actually like even be a cop anymore because he was so uh, sort of compromised physically. They tell him, he, you got it. We found a match. You got one. And the person has made this caveat that they don't want to be known. They don't want to give their name. They want it to be totally anonymous, but they're going to give you the kidney. They're a match. He goes, okay. A week before he's about to get the kidney, he's signing some paperwork and some paperwork got messed up. 
and he goes, why is my partner from, from the NYPD, why is his name on this paper? Oh, no. Foot five. Why, why is Sully's name on the, wait a minute, pen shaking. Why is this paperwork for Sully? <laughs> then a tight close says he, can, let, can we do it as an acting yeah. exercise? Yeah. This is him and he goes. You do why? it, then I'll do it. Yeah, of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm of I'm course. Doing. Great. Why, why is that? Hey, uh, nurse, why does this paperwork say my partner, Sully? I need a donut. <laughs> he goes, he goes away. You got to do it. Okay. You don't need a funny line. I just want the face. I just want the face. And it's just for the fun. Yes. Okay. It's okay. just for fun. Valid, I do this all the time. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll lead you in with here's your paperwork. Thank you. Here's your paperwork, officer. For sure. <clears throat> for sure. I'm already loving it with the for sure. You see the Mets last night. Oh, yeah. I'm a working class person just like you. I love the Mets. <laughs> this is how they talk, right? Yeah, yeah I'm a hardworking <laughs> nurse and you're a cop. Well, of course I watch the Mets. <laughs> I don't like those hoity toity Yankees. Oh, God. Get out of here. Uh, Larry David on Seinfeld, yeah. but you don't see him? <laughs> right. the, the owner. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, owner of the Yankees. Steinbrenner. Steinbrenner. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look over here. All right, all right, sounds good. Why is Lonzo's name here? Jesus, <laughs> put it, put it. That was so. That was legit great. I'm a little emotional. Me too. You quivered. I know. And you said Lonzo, which you really sold it for me. I was trying to think of Denzel Washington's character's name in Training Day. It's Lonzo. It's Lonzo. I know. You in the office. But he was a dirty cop. He was dirty. He was no good. But in a way that you kind of understood. Yeah. You know, the streets. It's great. <laughs> you guys. The streets. I mean, this is, I've had moments like that driving, because you realize living in LA. <laughs> wiping away a tear. Lonzo! Why is my partner on here? <laughs> Old one kidney Lonzo. <sighs> Can you imagine the first day in their squad car? We don't have to do the scene, but the door <laughs> closes and they're just like, oh, we are going to do the scene. <laughs> okay, okay. You're, you're, you're Lonzo. <laughs> so, okay, so I gave you the kidney. <laughs> and this is the first time we've seen each other. I get it. Nice sound, huh? Yeah. Yeah. They like this make you uh, appreciate the things that yeah. were right in front of you, you know? Yeah, good shit. Good shit. It's, uh, this is um, Lonzo and um, Jerry. We're uh, reporting for duty. I think I, uh, I left something in my locker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he can't handle it. Neither could I. <laughs> that would have been an easy scene to play because I couldn't handle it. It's so. Uh, I was leveled. I've been leveled for weeks from that scene. It feels good. It Does feels it, great. It's you, like New York, New York. <laughs> did you feel that when when you had a kiddo, like just something unlock in you for in that sure. way? Yeah, for sure. And everything. I know it's a cliche, but everything became so much less about myself, which was so important mm. for someone. I mean, the fucking pillows say my name, you know <laughs> sure. what I mean? And so there was a necessary softening and like all, all the cliches, I'll, but the cliche that I'm avoiding, I don't know why, is I'm like, you see that she's good. Mm. Like this morning, she's been sleeping in our bed and w it's been awesome. I woke up before she did and did some stuff and then I came back while she was waking up and I was like, I get to see her waking up and she's just like, she just goes like this. She's like total abandon. And just like instantly in joy and love and starts rolling around and kissing mom and kissing me. And I'm just like, I don't have any needs. Yeah. Like she's good. Yeah. I'm her Lonzo. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's that. Yes. It's like having something that you would give yourself to and you do give yourself to. When my wife and I are tired, we're like, babies are really like those monsters in harry potter that like suck your <laughs> like your face starts getting yeah. sucked into their vortex yes so all the like people that don't have children they're absolutely right they're like it doesn't look fun i heard seth rogan be like it doesn't look very fun and i'm like you're right yes 
it's just so, and I'm not even trying to counterpoint it, just saying there are so many beautiful things that will never make sense to your mind. Mm -hmm. Your mind will always go, that will deplete us, that will kill us, that will age us, that will hurt us, that will tire us and exhaust us, that will break us. Yes. And then your heart is like, Lonzo needs a kidney. I know Lonzo's the one that gives the kidney. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? This doesn't make sense. I need two, two kidneys. Yeah. You do it anyway. It's amazing how I, I, my son is four and this was such a lesson for me. I don't know how you are with people apologizing to Katie, you. Can you make it colder in here? Sorry, Josh. Sure, sure. Starting to get sweaty with all the Lonzo act outs. <laughs> I know, it gets me all worked up. <laughs> I am. But I, I don't know how you are with apologies, but like if 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 someone does me wrong and then they they eventually do apologize to me or something happens, like sometimes I'll be punishing even with my forgiveness, mm. right? And I'll be like- Very astute. You're going to pay for that. But yeah. yes, I forgive because I know I'm supposed to. You know, but love this. I didn't mean to interrupt, just couldn't wait. Yes. There's a th I won't get all into it, but I'm reading something called The Course in Miracles, and they call that forgiveness to destroy. It's when mm. you do something that seems gracious, but you're actually just doing it as another way to attack people and be superior. So yeah. to forgive by acknowledging your error yes. is, is, is sort of going like, you know, I really should. You really hurt me that day. Yeah. And it really did break my heart. And there were a lot of lonely nights thinking about what you did. And you're, you're really like salting it up. Right. You're milking it. Yeah. And it's just another trip to feel mm. special and feel innocent and scapegoat Righteous. them. Righteous. And exactly. And, and you just kind of get your hit. That's like right. You get a little, I'm good, they're bad fix off of it. Mercy. It's written on a post-it over there. Forgiveness is overrated. Mercy is where it's at. Mercy doesn't even acknowledge the, the grievance. That's right. It just right. goes away. You open the airlock on the space shuttle. It's gone. Yeah, you like, grant it's gone. Yeah, someone gets mercy for a horrible crime, and it's yeah, like, yeah, exactly. There's no yeah, strings there's no attached. record of it. It's like get rid of it, and and you didn't even do it. The, I like this airlock analogy because it's like <clears throat> nature did it. I just let it be released. I'm not looking at it and going like, okay, I can cross that out. Right. Let's see. I guess I could cross this out. It's just poof, gone because you need it too. And it's what we, like, you were saying the, the way your daughter wakes up and just everything is fine and great. And my, yeah. my son, when uh, the other day I was rushing to get to work and I usually take him to school in the morning. And it was just one of those days where, and he was like, I don't feel good. My stomach hurts. And I just was like, I took your temperature. You're fine. Like, trust me, you're fine. And I was like, come on, we'll go to Starbucks. We'll get you the warm. You like the warm croissant. We get you the warm croissant. Like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's all going to be great. What do you need? A warm croissant? <laughs> How yeah. many warm croissants is uh, going to take to get me out of this? Yeah, warm croissant or Pepto Bismol? Yeah. Yeah, pick your choice. Lean into the Hemsworth, or we can do it my way. <laughs> right. You want some vapor rub? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are we talking about here? <laughs> and I'm I'm warm croissanting him up. I'm paying with the Starbucks app. It's gorgeous. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> love the detail. I don't even take my wallet out. No, I'm on the app. It's perfect. Yes. I'm redeeming gold stars. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, they're giving me shots I don't even want. I'm taking them. <laughs> and I'm like, listen, if you don't feel good, tell you, you're going to school. I'm like, but if you don't feel good, tell the teacher and me or mom will come and pick you up. But I, I got to go. Like, I'm yeah. running to work. I'm sorry. So I drop him off within. And there have been times where he's forgotten all about, had the best day ever. This was one of those times where 10 minutes later, the call comes in. Yeah. He's in tears. He's holding his tummy. He doesn't feel good. I think he just had to get to the bathroom. Regardless. This morning, Leela was like, I don't feel good. I was like, you probably have to poop. And she was like, yeah. <laughs> God bless her. I, like, I love her. Welcome to the planet. Yeah. Most of it is pooping and sleeping. Yeah. Most of our problems. <laughs> so and exercise. much. Pooping, sleeping, and getting your heart rate up. <laughs> Welcome to Earth. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Go on. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh. And so, and I felt awful. And thankfully, my mother-in-law was able to pick him up because my wife and I were both working and. And when I got home that day, I took him to my office because I don't know about your parents. My mom is, and she's the best, but she's never done this. Yeah. And I'm like, I took him to my office. I said, buddy, I just want to apologize to you. I'm dead. I can't <laughs> even look at you. I had to break eye contact. I, I've said on stage, if my dad ever said, you know, Peter, I'm really sorry, I'd die. Yeah. There'd also be a part of me that wouldn't like it. I'd be like, don't 
don't do this now. Don't take it over weak. the finish line. <laughs> <laughs> weak. Yeah. See it all the way. Weak. Yeah. yeah. It's see like it a, all the way. It's like if my dad had found me or like come yeah. to see me. I'm yeah. like, no, no, no. Perfect record, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take it all the way. You don't want. No, take, keep it clean. <laughs> yeah. Keep it clean. I know. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I wonder in his last moments if he was like, I did it. Right. <laughs> yeah. We... <laughs> That'll be me with Game of Thrones. I've never watched Game of Thrones, so I'll be like, me either. I didn't watch it. <laughs> <laughs> and you're a great show. If it's any consolation, you're a great show. One of the best. People love that show. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, there is there is a certain, keep going though. Yes, keep going. So I, I said I was sorry, and I was like, you know, I'm going to do a better job of listening. I'm sorry I was in a rush, but when you don't feel good, I'm going to really make sure that I listen. And he just looked at me and said, okay. Like, and I was like, what a beautiful lesson yeah. in forgiveness. Like to your point, the airlock, air it was done. He airlocked it. Yeah. And he didn't do it. I think mercy is more in line with our natural state, meaning mm. we develop these egos and I'm not even poo-pooing the ego. Give me some time. I'll get there. Yeah. I'm actually saying the ego has obviously its purpose. It learns to distrust. It learns to protect. It learns to hoard and store, predict unpleasant futures, replay unpleasant past to like guard and not be, I won't be fooled again. Says yes. the ego. And that is like a bodyguard. That is, that is the nicest thing I can say about the ego. It is concerned. It's not always right in its methods, but it's concerned for this physical body <clears throat> and it's what it perceives its well being to be. If your ego was in a movie, it'd be played by Joe Pesci. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Every once in a while, <laughs> it comes out as a as a Billy Joel song for some reason. A line comes out <laughs> and flutters. <laughs> and possibly you know the song, and we we merge into a two part army. Um, I love that so much. Yeah. It is Joe Pesci. Yeah. What the fuck did you just? It's that. Yeah. And let's not just put that down because sometimes we need that. But it's that structure. It, it's overactive, like mm. overeating. Overeating can be is very similar. We're supposed to eat fat, sugar, calories. We're supposed to get it when we can. So yeah. finish the milkshake. So that gets um, enlarged, and then we overeat. Also, your ego that's just trying to protect you psychologically gets enlarged. And instead of what I'm going to argue, and this, I'm forming this hypothesis on the fly, I think mercy is more our natural state. Mm. We start getting hurt over and over and over, and the ego goes, I've put together a, a, a proposal yes. and I think you need to stop forgiving. I think you need to stop trusting people because it's not safe out there. Right. You know what I mean? But your child who is growing up in love goes like, okay, and could, and could flush it out. No yes. problem. That's beautiful. Yeah. It teaches, it teaches me everything. Yes. And it's, it, you know, I think about it too. Like, you know, I'm a sober guy and I'm, I'm 36. So I'm 15 years sober. And what I know of my grandfather and I don't know him, I didn't know him at all, but like from what my mom says, and I hate to be like in armchair, uh, do any armchair diagnostics on someone, but I'm not Dak Shepard. <laughs> okay. <good. laughs> okay. Wait, you're not. Sometimes people think I'm Dak Shepard. <laughs> I get it. God, he's, very done, he's done very well. It's always on that chips motorcycle just around town. Aggressively well. <laughs> Almost too well. Dak's a little. It's enough too well uh, yeah. leave some for the rest of us spread it around yeah would it kill you yeah maybe the next offer that comes in forward it to a dax type yeah which is me totally if a I dax out type for 12 months <laughs> fair <laughs> are you the, how may i ask how old you are i'm 44 i just turned 44 are you toying with the trt What's maybe TRT? testosterone replacement therapy Oh, uh, my whole life is working towards finally being able to rationalize why I should be on the needle. What's TRT? <laughs> what is TRT? TRT. It's it. It basically it, it, how they are they, they doing it. Rogan is. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of who else. Almost every guy I know in Hollywood is Does to a, TRT to a certain extent. Yeah, they're just it's basically is this in. Um... Bros, when he's injecting in his butt, is he injecting testosterone? I didn't see it, but oh, homophobic! Yeah, massively. Didn't know you were closed-minded. Wow, I did you have anything to do with that movie? 
only that I loved it. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> now that voice is problematic. <laughs> yeah. This whole thing. Yikes. Uh, <laughs> this, this isn't the clip. Joe, this isn't the clip. Cut it out. Cut it out. <laughs> no, um, okay. I'm, it I've might only, have been testosterone. I've only just repaired my relationship with Judd Apatow, so I will say, bros looks incredible, and I can't wait to wait, see you it. severed it? <laughs> oh, yeah. How? I talked about this on, uh, oh, I, on I, ours? Did, I don't know if we did. Well, not that you'd remember. No. We have to wrap this up. <laughs> I'm waiting. I'm waiting for it. For the okay, we'll get into that. Tell I me get what, you back seven years later. I walk out on your pod. <laughs> I thought that's what was going to happen. I've been playing like, the long game. Wow. This is like, like Peter Thiel and Gawker. Matchstick, man. <laughs> yeah. <gasps> Different refs. Um, okay, we'll get to you and how you sp spurned Apatow, but what <laughs> TRT is you just take testosterone and you, you maintain your muscles and stuff? The, the argument would be that like when people take testosterone replacement therapy, human growth hormone, that your body- It's the same thing? They're different. Oh, okay. But that your body naturally in your 30s and then in your 40s down regulates these things because it goes, we're fully grown. Yeah. We have enough. Something like human growth hormone, which can speed up all your good sort of hormones, right? Like your growth hormones, you build muscle, you get more lean. It also, it doesn't discern. So it can also speed up bad cells in your body, like cancer and these other things. Right, right, right. right. So your body naturally goes... I'm in my 30s. I'm naturally more susceptible to disease, to bad things. Let me just downregulate this a little bit so I'm not constantly exposed. And I don't need to be perhaps be able to lift as much as I once did. Right, right, right. Um, so everyone- You just sold me to not do it, by the way. Well, I'm trying to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But everyone, because I love this, all my friends who do it in their 40s will go, yeah, you know, I got tested. I'm like, let me guess, you're low. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. it's like, if you get audited, they're going to find something. Right, right, right. right? They, they if didn't you're just... looking at your testosterone, nobody's like, you're off the charts, Conan. <laughs> yeah, you're fine. It's not going to be that. Yeah. Can I tell you, though, in, so, ugh, I hate every time I say this, or maybe I'm embarrassed. Maybe I can't, like your acting coach said, stand up straight. <laughs> tell but me. I've started lifting weights, which really spikes your testosterone. It helps. And I'll say, uh, Look, if it's not testosterone, it's something else. It's the wind of the devil. I don't know what it is, but something blew up my ass. And when I lift weights, I have to be very careful the rest of the day and mm. sometimes the day after. Um, watch how I'm driving. Watch how I'm uh, handling conflict. And it's not placebo. I it, Nobody's going like, well, yeah, I... Uh, like lifting weights isn't such a highlight of my day that I just carry the memory of it. I mean, like it's in my blood and I'm like much more like, like I had a business call the other day and, and somebody, I was just telling Katie about it. They quoted too, way too big of a cut of something like they like wanted 50%. And I was just like, oh, yeah, no, no. Like I, I'm not that person I'm just mm. going like, that's ridiculous. <clears throat> like, and, and I had, I had lifted weights that day and I was like, so testosterone's a fickle bitch. Like it's not just, doesn't just turn you into Jason Statham. Could also very well explain a lot of terrible behavior. <laughs> you that, have to be careful, right? But like heavy, they say of all the exercises, heavy back squats because your your biggest muscles are in your legs. Yeah, will create testosterone in a way that very few things can, unless you're on the needle. Interesting. Is yeah. That, so is that what you're doing? No, so I'm not on that, but like what uh, the needle people in there, like, I don't know if you, uh, Burt Kreischer and Segura on their pod recently shot each other up really with TRT, like on camera. Oh my God. So it seems to be like kind of the thing and it's tempting, but you can never get off of it, but it certainly you will you can never get off of it because you mean once you get off of it, you deflate. Yes. And also because basically you're telling, you're giving such a flood of it more than your body would ever create that your body is a smart little, you know, factory yeah. and goes, yikes, turn, turn it off. Like we're done. Too much is coming in. Yeah. It's so, like a disco being filled with bubbles. Right. <laughs> too many bubbles. This is crazy. People are having too much fun. <laughs> what is this? Ibiza? Turn it off. <laughs> We can't do you this. Want waist or lower with bubbles. <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. So you're, you're, I, everything you're telling me just makes it sound like it's an awful idea. Your body's not ready for, dude, I don't take melatonin because your brain creates melatonin. Right. And you shouldn't supplement it. It's like a, I, I look, I don't mean to go on and on. About no, the anti melatonin. But don't give it to your kids. No, and people do. But they do. Yeah, my we friend. We were. We didn't know. Then right. I researched it and I was like, no. It's something your brain makes. Maybe if you go to Australia and you need to reset your rhythm, you right. can take some melatonin, but not every night just to fall asleep. Also, it doesn't, I don't think it actually helps you fall asleep. It just 
does something different. It's different. That it doesn't just sedate you. It's doing something with your clock. I don't. I don't know how else to explain it. Just Google melatonin, Doctor Huberman. But you, <laughs> you love leave him. me alone and watch Huberman. I call him Drew. <laughs> Watch Drew Huberman. <laughs> Drew Huberman said totally Drew, different guy. Drew. Drew, how much steak should I eat? Keep going. Uh, what about you, you like the CBD? I do like CBD. Yeah, yeah. And this, I was going to tell you about this. This has mm. HMB. This, that's what Nirvana water is. And that really helps with recovery Ooh. and it helps your body from losing muscle. So, especially in your 40s, my, my friend David Vanderveen, who hooked us up with this, he was like, you, with your recovery and weight training, they started giving it to people who were sick. And one of the things that happens when you're sick, a doctor developed it for patients that were losing body mass. Yes. So they need to get HMB in their system. And that's what this is also with D3. So that's, wow. yeah, there you go. You can, dude, you can fucking have that. Brother, I'm going to chug yours. it. That's yours. Yes. If I hadn't just peed, I would be I know that. you did at a nearby coffee shop. I'm a pee guy. I'm a constant a pee. peer. Oh, are you a big pee? I'll, ru I'll ruin a road trip. I pee too much. <laughs> it's bad. I wonder, because I've given a lot of thought to this, and then we have to get to food, because I just want to talk about that with you. Please. How much is our pee thing? Uh -oh. I'm including myself in this. Oh, boy. Here we go. I'm ready. A fear that the universe isn't going to take care of us. Yeah. Because isn't best Josh and best Pete just kind of like, I? because I can be this guy sometimes. Like, there'll be a bathroom. Like, let me put it this way. Um, if I'm taking something like MDMA, one of those like, you know, really lowers your anxiety. I know you're sober. I'm just mm -hmm. saying like something that puts you in that state could also just be being in love or having a perfect moment. Yeah. Oxytocin. Yes. Dopamine. the same stuff as being released. However, whatever means you're just, you're not so preoccupied with like, will I be able to pee? You just have like yeah. a more, I had this revelation recently. I was like, everything is anxiety. Everything is anxiety. It seems. Yes. Including even peeing. Like, stop the car, to me, is bubbling up from a place of, like, do you love me? Mm. Will you protect me? Like, I, and you start forecasting a future, like, how many miles to the next thing? Can I stop this? Am I going to explode? I, so for me, it's an anxiety issue as much as it's a physical I got to, but I, I've, I'm interested to hear this. What places give you a sense of security if and when you do have to pee, I'll answer that target. I see a target. I know I'm not going to have to make eye contact with nobody. I ain't going to have to look at nobody. I don't like having to say, can I have the key? You know where I don't Can I also like just this. say, why did it take so long for a corporate, a corporation to realize, just give them the bathroom. Yes. Just give them the bathroom. Let us have give it. Give it to them. Yeah. How unhoused people are going to go number two in there. Yeah. Yeah. Let them. Let them. Let them. Because yeah. that guy's got a sock full of nickels and he's going to see that take five bar on the way out. That's right. That's a sale. <laughs> take five That's bar. That's a sale. He takes a two, he takes a five. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rico likes nut rages as much as the next guy. <laughs> you telling me because you don't have a house, you don't like a nut rages? <laughs> The CEO from Target is Joe Pesci, apparently, but like, no, it's, it's some other character. I don't know who it is. Yeah. Yeah. Give us, I don't even like Starbucks because the bathroom is too part of the store. Right. You have to announce. I think it's funny that you're just standing in a room and everyone knows there's tension in my bladder. Yeah. I don't like that. Target goes, even the area where you'd have to wait if someone's in there, it's private. That area is basically a bathroom. <laughs> yeah. The waiting room is a bathroom. Oh, and then they'll in a pinch. <laughs> and then they'll just have like, uh, my favorite is taking a family bathroom when I'm not with my family. Can I just say, Josh, <laughs> that the family bathroom, here's two pro tips I got for you. Tell One, me. you go to a hotel, you've been traveling a lot, you want some water. Mm. But the water in the room, that bottle of water is $7. Crazy. Here's a fucking hot tip that no goddamn motherfucker is going to tell you. Go to the gym. Yes, sir. Go to the gym. Yeah. Because guess what's in the gym? A cooler of free bottled water. Same bottle. Yeah. Go get it. You don't even have to work out. What, are they going to stop you? Right. I'm sorry, are you working out? No, I'm hacking the system. Yeah. Because I'm your king. Yes. Two, I love the family bathroom. We were just at the uh, airport. I feel like... This is, look, I'll never kill a fox. I'll never start a fire. 
but I will spot a vacant family bathroom when Val is about to walk what looks like three furlongs to the ladies' room. Mm. And I go, sweetheart, that's green. That's green vacant. Yeah. And that bathroom's for you. Oh, you don't have a family? Nobody's waiting for it. Yeah. I don't see a guy with seven kids going, oh, great, a lady went in there. Go do your business. That's right. It's all poop and pee, baby. It's all. <laughs> The fucking porcelain mouth doesn't give a shit. Uh, Pour it in. I I just think what's gonna I, I'm gonna take my sweet time here. Oh, it's your little apartment. It's a little apartment. There's even that bed, the plastic koala bed. Oh, the koala take bed. Take a nap on it. Yeah. You can. <laughs> Listen, curl, buckle in, curl up, curl up. Yeah, that's why it has a koala on there. <laughs> it's literally there. Get cozy. Tap into your inner marsupial. I we did a monologue on the Pete Holmes show about bathrooms that we love, and it's like I want a turn lock. I want like a lock, a deadbolt. Yes. I don't want the push and the thing. Crazy. I because you don't know is the door fully like sometimes you really have to push to a click and then you can close it. Yeah. I want a shitung. Ideally, I want prison style, like the the bar. Oh, uh, yes. And then it clicks up. Yeah. Great. I want one of those posts that you can get from Amazon that goes up. Yes. Into you. Yes. <laughs> and then it goes into your, like, into the door jam. Like on a sliding door. Yes. I want a sliding door bar. But the reason I'm going to favor the deadbolt is because that tells the people on the outside, occupied. It goes right. red. Ugh. And God help you if you knock on that red door. If you knock on that you red knock door. knock on that red door. No. You know what? Guess who's going to try and take a second shit? <laughs> a spite shit. Yeah. Because fuck. Fuck you. I'm going to scroll TikTok. Oh, um, I don't even have to. I'm going <laughs> to log in. I'm going to sign up. You know what? You got something against the Chinese government? I love the Chinese government. <laughs> this podcast is brought to you by the Chinese government. That'd be a nice sponsor. Is it communist? It's a good sponsor. What's that? <laughs> it's a nice sponsorship. It's a good sp Oh, yeah. I, I mean, it's not this water. Go to china.gov. <laughs> Yeah. Don't say this water. Say Nirvana Water Sciences .com, I'm sorry, Nirvana. <laughs> there you go. I know. There I know what it is to have go. your friend's water. <laughs> I mean, and I believe. No, I'm sure. It's no, great. no, no, no. Oh, I'm going to drink, gonna drink it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to. No, don't, you do it. It don't you do it. Don't you do it. I'm going to put down the microphone. Look at you. Look at you. Okay, let's talk a little bit about food. <laughs> They're very. I now I shit on it. It's <laughs> impossible to open. But if they bottle it, but if you get if you put a pen in the side and it starts going out like fucking little boy blue. It's so That's good. Not little Jack Horner. <laughs> Who do I mean? The guy that puts his finger in the hole? It's not this a little, is a little Jack Blue, little boy bean. Somebody's <laughs> screaming at their radio because they're listening to the radio while they also listen to this podcast. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. As you guys know, I'm a big believer in talk therapy. I, I first found it when I was in a huge period of uncertainty in my life. I was in a new city and in a bad relationship, a romantic relationship that I just didn't know how to navigate through. I didn't know how to get out of it. I didn't know how to make it better. I didn't know, I didn't know anything. I didn't know how to set up boundaries. I didn't know how to practice self-love. And I certainly didn't know what codependence was. I didn't even know what codependence was until I talked to a licensed therapist, a trained professional. Talking to a therapist is greater than the sum of its parts. It makes such a difference in the core of who we are. And those conversations and that guidance can change your life for the better. It certainly did for me. Because sometimes the path forward isn't always clear, whether you're dealing with career decisions, romantic decisions, anything else. Therapy helps you stay connected to what you really want while you navigate life so you can move forward with confidence and excitement and trusting yourself to make decisions that align with your values. You know, it's like anything. The more you practice it, the easier it gets. And in my experience, having a trained professional guiding you along the way makes it that much easier. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. You just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. So let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash weirdo today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash weirdo. Support your, your psyche, support your mind, support yourself, and support this show. Also, unrelated, 
Did you know we're eating and drinking roughly a credit card's worth of plastic a week? A week. Yeah, that's right. The products that we're using every day are ultimately contaminating our water supply, generating hundreds of microplastics that we end up ingesting. Well, luckily, our friends at Blue Land set out to do something about it to eliminate the need for single-use plastic in the products we reach for the most, like hand soap. Did you know that an estimated 5 billion, pla- 5 billion plastic hand soap and cleaning bottles are thrown away each year. And if that's not bad enough, most cleaning formulas are 90% water, which is heavy to ship, leading to excessive carbon emissions, not to mention nasty ingredients in them like chlorine and ammonia. But Blue Land is reinventing cleaning essentials to be better for you and for the planet by offering endlessly refillable cleaning products with a beautiful, cohesive design that looks great on your counter. Just fill the bottles with water, drop in the tablets, and wait for them to dissolve. That means they don't have to ship the water anymore. That means we don't have to waste the plastic anymore. That means hand soap, toilet bowl cleaner, and laundry tablets, all with clean ingredients you can feel good about. No more bulky cleaning supplies on your grocery run, and refills start at just $2.25. I recommend their Clean Essentials Kit, which has everything you need to get started and comes in beautiful light scents such as iris agave, fresh lemon, and eucalyptus mint. Blue Land also has an offer just for weirdos. Get 15% off your first purchase of any product and get cleaning, <laughs> cleaning, excuse me, cleaning products that I love the look of. In fact, if that was the main thing for me, it might be the look of these bottles. It, I like that every room has this like through line and sleek design that looks cool, but I love that it's also good for you and good for the planet. So to get 15% off your first order, go to blueland.com slash YMIW, like you made it weird. You won't want to miss this, blueland.com slash YMIW. That's blueland.com slash YMIW. All right, let's get back to Josh Peck. Um, okay, <clears throat> food, just because I'd love, to, well, actually, let me, this is even better. Mm. I heard you say on another podcast, mm. which was great. It was you and some like, very restrained British man. If you want to hear like Josh not be interrupted, oh, diary but of also CEO. not riffing or having fun. Fair. Uh, no, I'm not. That that's unfair. You were having fun. It was a different. It was a different ca- style. style. I loved it though. Mm. I was like, this guy was just like, Josh, your mother raised you, and then yeah. he just let you talk. I was like, this is like a master class in Josh Beck. <laughs> this is just a hang that we recorded. <laughs> um, but you said you can't act your way into new ways of. No, you can't think your ways into new way of acting. You have right. to act your way into new way of thinking. Right. Say that properly. I didn't say it right. Um, you can't think your way into right action. You have to act your way into right thinking. Get the fuck in the canoe, God damn it! Yeah, We're going baby. on a safari. Yes, that's, we are. That's incredible. That's tell me everything. What? Tell uh, me everything that means. You know, there's like these the there are these slogans you get in recovery, and the annoying thing is, is that they're so trite and they're all true. Trite and true. Trite and true. Like stinking thinking. Stinking thinking. Or one day at a time. Hey, analysis is paralysis. Uh, is it odd or is it God? Ooh. That's a good one. That's nice. I like that one. It's kind of, it's a little magical, but yeah. I enjoy it. Compare and despair. Compare and despair is fucking dope. Yeah. If you're not grateful, you're greedy. It's not really a saying. You but can't feel grateful and afraid at the same time as well. Yeah, that's Some good. version of that. I love that. Yeah. Jesus. I'm, I've never gone to AA, but mm. I think I'm going to start going. Just- just because I never wanted to co-opt someone else's trip. Mm. You know what I mean? I'm definitely yes. addicted to alcohol and I haven't had a drink in seven years. Oh, wow. But now I have a good friend. We're getting closer and he's in the program. And I'm just like in awe of him because of stuff like this. So tell me what that means. Well, I, it, it connects to another phrase. Uh, and obviously the beautiful thing about 12 Step is that it's a, a God of your own understanding, right? So it, there's no... But but there's a lot of God talk in it. So I understandably, and there's certainly people who are agnostic or atheists who have gotten sober with the help of 12 step. Like you can do it. Sorry, I, I'm just thinking about the clouds parting and like a deity coming out with a flaming sword. It's like the rapture and he goes, kneel before a God of your own understanding. <laughs> it's like incredibly like spacious. <laughs> yes. It doesn't, it doesn't demand fierce loyalty. It's like, how am you think of me and like one guy's just kneeling to like the ocean right. there's always one guy that's like my high power is the ocean ocean it's always an ocean hot guy. yoga hot yoga it's something i hope it wasn't bikram jeez jeez seen geez. that doc jeez watch that doc after emergency nyc on netflix right it'll get your heart back to cynical 
<laughs> right. Okay, so um, higher power of your own understanding. But there's also this phrase in, in 12 step of something like, uh, I've never needed God to, or I've never had to, I've, I've never had to think my way out of something God's got me into, but I've needed God to get me out of something I thought my way into. It's fucking it, slam dunk. It's just good shit. It's and, good shit. And it's way, it's sometimes it's stuff like that, that you feel like you have to live another 10 years to like fully get that. You're like, I know that's true. Yes. But then when it really like proves like a, like dough, like when it proves, <laughs> yeah. like now I really get it. I mean, I can only speak to my own experience because it's always tenuous sort of talking about the 12 step stuff. But I, I'll say for me, like when I went in and they said, um, you're self-centered. And I said, there's no way I wow. said, cause that's reserved for people who like themselves. Yes. And they were like, uh, uh, they're like, if you spend your whole day thinking about how great or how shitty you are, you're self-centered. Preach. And I was like, gotcha. And they were like, you need self-esteem. And I was like, well, I don't know. That's impossible. Right. I have low self-esteem. Like, oh, the way you get self-esteem is by doing esteemable acts. I was like, huh. And they're like, so go clean the coffee pot. Whoa. Like, I'm that kind of dumb. That's like um, FDR's wife, right? Wasn't uh, she in the program? Was Eleanor Roosevelt no, in the program? There was a famous, it's a famous one. And I just embarrassed myself by thinking no. it was Eleanor Roosevelt. Well, it was it's pretty somebody, close. Somebody up like, there and they were like, go clean the bathroom. And that was like the first thing that she had to do. And she learned, like, if you use the bathroom, you mm -hmm. should clean the bathroom. Yeah. Like, like that's a good lesson. Like there are no new ancient truths. Right. So these are tenants. Like to me, the miracle of 12 step or like whatever, uh, you know, the, yeah, the miracle of 12 step is the packaging, right? That it took these ancient truths that any great religion, any great sort of spiritual tenant has taken gratitude, acceptance, surrender, yeah. and it just repackaged it in a way that a drunk like me could understand yes. it. And it made the entry fee instead of piety and walking in proud brokenness. That's so right. So you walk in humble. That's you right. actually walk, walk in shattered and embarrassed. And yes. that's, sorry to be so Christian, but that's what the cross is. It goes, you fall upward, mm. you, you crucify, you die, and that's how you figure out who you are. It, it's not, <laughs> it's not that. Right. Nothing is learned from in the winner's circle, right? That's right, yeah. yeah. It's always, it, it's, it's the last house on the block. Like you never learned anything on a good day. My best thinking got me a front row seat in AA, <laughs> right? And yeah. that's like, and, and that's sort of like that, that humility where it's like finally being willing to try it someone else's way, which has been such a. That's the whole thing. You is admitting you're wrong and admitting that even your badness is an ego trip. What were you going to say? You said. You said this on my pod. Uh, I'll never forget it. And because I, I used have to, to go. <laughs> And you were like, thank you. I have to go Disney boy, I think I said. I don't care how many followers you got. Let's get me out of here. Yeah. By the way, earlier you said 3.1 and it's actually 16.1, P. Is it really? Yeah, I'm crushing it. Your Wikipedia needs an update and anyone can do that. Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> now look at me differently. 3.1 YouTube. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 3.59. It's been a slower build. YouTube's harder. It's more based on talent. Anyway, uh, <laughs> YouTube's a bitch. Is it? It's, um, it's harder to grow. Believe, that's where we are. Yeah, I get it. It's tricky. It's Yeah, it's tough. But we're also okay. Acceptance. <laughs> yes. Okay. I'm having a great time. You know yeah. what I mean? You ever have those moments you're like, what am I complaining about? Yes, I, I wish the YouTube numbers were bigger. Shut up. Shut you know what I mean? Shut the fuck up. What, it's okay. What is that for you, right? Because like... I mean, I loved crashing. Obviously, I'm a massive fan of yours. And, you know, I, I would imagine not to project, but like there are those boxes that we, I would imagine guys like us have, like love a show, love to have a show that I create. And I guess if I could pick any network, it'd be HBO. Yes. Right. So yeah. like box checked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then what? Very generous question. I'll answer it quickly because I want to get back to your thing. Sure. I want to write and star in a movie. That, that would be the next thing. Cool. Yeah. Because you can really control what you want to say. Mm. And, and I know that sounds maybe pretentious, but also what you want to do, like instead of waiting for someone to like write a movie where you can shine, you go, I know how I'm funny. I'm funny, silly dancing. I'll write a silly dancing scene. I'm funny. This, I feel like people respond when I'm like that. So you can just do it. And it also just feels like 
the next medium? I, to to be honest, I'm really I've been a little blocked on it. I've been doing it for a while. Yeah. And that's kind of how I know I'm on the right thing because I'm like scared. Ooh. My ego's like, I don't think you can do it. So you're like, oh, good. Like like Jordan, Ugh. Michael Jordan. You're yeah. like, oh, good. Right. Now I have an opponent. So it makes it a little bit more compelling. Isn't it amazing how fear can give you such a fog? Like I remember I, I did. Oh, my God. I did this. And you don't even know. Dude, I did this show for one season on Fox where I played John Stamos' son. Grandparented? <laughs> Grandfathered. Fuck! <laughs> Close. Grandparented would just be about the grandchildren. <laughs> yeah. Like, These guys are great. <laughs> Prune candy, I love it. I mean, I wish I could teleport back to 13-year-old Josh and say, buddy, yeah. one day we're going to be able to pass for John Stamos' spawn. Yeah. So stop eating so much trans fat and yes, get happy because it's going right. to work out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop eating frosting. <laughs> yes. Frosting's a topping, Gravy's not a beverage. <laughs> <laughs> it can be. Sure. It's a delicious uh, wheat-based beverage. Yes. Why do they do that? Um, Go on. But, uh, and I remember I, I'm, so I'm auditioning for the show and the show is basically, it's conceit is that this wonderfully debonair, dashing sort of 50 something Clooney S type guy finds out that not only does he have a son that he had never met, but that kid has a kid. So he's a grandfather in an instant. Yeah. And I'm sitting with my act friend. Break. Exactly. <laughs> huh? It's literally the act break. <laughs> I'm a good grandfather. And he has a kid. Hold on. The double sprinting. Has yeah. anyone ever done that? That's it's brilliant. Happened. It has to a double. Happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put it in your movie. They did one on uh, done. They did one on Thirty Rock where she, she's talking and then someone says something and she goes and she goes. I wasn't even drinking anything. They've <laughs> done every good. version of it. <laughs> Keep going. Um, and I remember. Um, so I've got the sides and it's that scene where I'm like, uh, you dated the $30 my mother. Sides. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you dated my mother and 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 uh, I'm your son. And I remember I'm with my my buddy who's a great actor, and I go, yeah, man, I just don't know if I'm right. Like I don't know, I don't know my way into this thing. And he goes, hey, dumb asshole, <laughs> like dumb asshole, it's you. Yeah, it's you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know. Like, Hilarious. Can you like that's how blind we can be to our own realities? I texted Ryan Holiday. I uh, saw him yesterday. No shit. Yeah. He's that's in why LA? I, uh no, we were in at the airport together in New York. No. Randomly way. ran into each Crazy. other. Crazy. Yeah. Well, I was so I was felt so privileged to be able to text him, but I was like, look, I've had this movie idea for years, like you getting this show. This ties in, I mean. I was like, I don't know why. Why can't I write it? Like I was like, look, I know I even said I know you usually make like 30 grand an hour to answer questions like this, but give old Holmesy a free one or yes. mark this as spam. Always give them an out. Or mark it as spam. But I'm just like, I have the movie outlined. I have the idea. Mm. I have producers attached. He wants me to star, make it. They have the deal set up. Why can't I write it? And he goes, it sounds like The Resistance. And I go, what's that? He goes, you need to read a book called The The War of Art. Yeah. You've read it? Yeah. See, I, see everybody Pressfield. knows. Pressfield. Yeah, Stephen Pressfield, who I'll reach out and have him on the pod. But just watching Stephen Pressfield on other people's podcasts, I immediately was like, oh, that's what it is. And I can't, you know, perfectly summarize it. Chat GPT can. <laughs> it really can. But um, basically, it's this idea that your your ego, we're back at ego, doesn't want you to merge into transcendent creativity and, and perfect flow state where you're constantly channeling and, and, and discovering un, the unlimited potential of the collective unconscious. It wants you to be you. It wants, it would rather you be broken and afraid, but definitely the ego, then be like ethereal and light and vanish into nothingness. So there's this like existential fear yeah. to like having your dreams kind of come true or pursue that thing or write that book. So it tells you who are you because it's worried that you'll figure out who you are in the process, which right. is not your ego. And broken and afraid is familiar. It would rather you avoid the unknown miserable then risk it for potentially better, but also maybe worse. I yes. mean, broken is, is, is it. Yes. I sort of cut you off. You were saying to get your self-esteem up, you have to do esteemed acts. That is that what you meant by the act your way into better ways of thinking? Yeah. It was just this idea that like, I, I cannot think my way out of situations. Like I literally have to, it's like a hard reset. And 
what I've learned is that it's only in service of others and it's only by like, like if I'm overrun and it's a beautiful thing of having a kid and if I'm overrun with, and it's, it's just those old familiar feelings, right? I'm either in fear of losing what I have or not getting what I want. Mm. Like if it all boils down to that, mm. right? I can't, I couldn't possibly live with less, mm -hmm. right? It's like, that's the same too, right? Like the key to getting more is wanting less. Mm. And I, I don't know that one. That's a good one. It's a good one. And also wanting what you have also is such a key to yeah. everything. Just go like, and we try to do that with our daughter. It's like, she wants more and more and more. And we go, baby, I know. Wanting is like a monster. There's always another want. It's like the trick is to want what you have. And like, as I'm saying it to her, I'm like, I have to do this. Too. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And it's this great, all these things, like allowing your kid to, uh, you know, take away your attention from self or making that phone call immediately, like taking action to do something for someone else is like mm. the thing I would walk in my twenties just so, and, and sober, but just leveled by an audition, leveled by something that my projection, my expectation of how I thought it should go, it did not live up to that expectation. It never did. Yeah. And thus a flood of self-centered fear spirals come around and I'm in twisters and Bill Paxson's not to be found yes. and Helen Hunt's not in this movie. And I'm just like alone <laughs> with my self-created tornadoes of self. It's all self-centered fear. Yeah. And, um, and it is an ego trip too. Yes. All of that. It's all about me. It's all about me. Keep going. Yeah. And, and just taking that action. I, I remember early on in sobriety, my first six months, I just was terrified to talk to anyone about anything. And guys would say, get really good. Like, you want to get our respect? Like, get really good at, at cleaning out the coffee pot. Wow. Like, go stack the chairs. It's every kung fu movie. It's, it, you're right. Yeah. There's no new ancient wisdom. Go sweep the steps. You right. know what I mean? Get low. Yes. And acts of service. That's what my my sober friend was saying. Because I, I, I don't like this about myself, but I struggle with my dog. My dog is like this endless need machine. That's what I project onto him. Sure. He follows me, and I literally go, what dumb fucks think this is love? <laughs> what fucking desperate idiot thinks their dog loves them? You're walking around eating a turkey leg, and he's following you, and you're like, oh, Sprinkles loves me. Yeah. He wants your scraps. He's looking for carry-on. <laughs> yes. He's a vulture. <laughs> right. He, that's his instinct. He can't help it. I also, I, I can speak from my truer, higher, more spacious, free self. Brody and I love each other. I can get into that space for sure. But if I'm pinched and tight, and I wake up, and he's barking, or he's begging, or he just wants his food, and he just... I, I just happen to always look in the yard when he's shitting with his thin legs <laughs> shaking and shitting. And I'm just like, I have to get into those acts of service. I can't, it's exactly what you're saying. I can't think my new, uh, new way. I can't, I have to act. I have to go and pick up his poop yeah. with love. Yes. I have to feed him with love. I have to pet him. And that's what I've started to do. It's like, I have these like feelings of completely undeserved anger or, or frustration towards my dog and if you, you get down and you start petting them you get them a treat oh my god it's cleaning the coffee pot do you want to like uh, people oh, i think we romanticize these things of like to have these moments is is you know these spectacular like cloud party moments you want to have a real moment of grace mm -hmm. in los angeles mm -hmm. where you live yeah take someone to the airport oh my god you want to talk about of the highest order? Yeah. You want to talk about being a, a, a Los Angeles monk? Yes. Be willing to sit or pick someone up from the airport. First of all, pick that- Pick up worse. Worse. That person will be like, are you serious? Yeah. Because we're all so conditioned of like, this yeah. is, you better be you asking to, a family member. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or like someone who owes you. Or someone, you helped him hide a body or whatever. Like, <laughs> right. It's a debt. Or you want to, you help someone move? You're going to feel good for months. This is this is something, it's in A Course in Miracles, but it's in other spiritual things as well. Giving is receiving. Yeah. That's the whole thing. And if you go alone, you're not going. No one goes to heaven alone. Right. It's only what you give. It's only where we go together. Yeah. It's in my giving heaven. And I just mean that energy, that space, that frequency here and now in me giving you my respect mm. and my attention and, you know, some kindness. 
That's how I, it's literally, I don't mean then you'll want to be, it doesn't yes. mean that. It means in the giving, it's already been given to me. It's, yes. That's just how it goes. And if you don't believe me, not who, who's, I mean, maybe you don't believe me, but you can literally close your eyes. It's a Buddhist practice, loving kindness. It's also in the course. You close your eyes and you just think of different people, maybe people you don't like, and you give them stuff. You you give them respect. You yeah. give them joy. You give them peace. But like as you say it, you'll feel your body, and you'll be shocked that your body can kaleidoscope internally in in as many different ways as it can. You'll feel I wish you uh, peace, and you'll feel peace. I wish you joy. You'll feel joy, bliss, fulfillment. Yeah. All of these things, and you get them as soon as it leaves your brain. And it doesn't matter if they receive it. It's happening here and now. It's yeah. happening. It's crazy. It's one of the biggest secrets of, of life. There's one kid right now looking up from his 48 Laws of Power and going like, I'm turning this off. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like this part of the pop. <laughs> What's Brendan Schaub talking about? Put on a Brendan Schaub podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, we didn't really get to food, and that's okay. I do love it. I know. But I'm... I'm, I've been this size for the last almost 20 years. And yeah. It's not on the forefront. I think I got, I don't want to say got it licked. You can't, Nick. I can't, I can't. You can't knock that. But I, um, yeah, because food was but a symptom of a greater problem that right. centered in my mind. Right. When I lost the weight and I discovered drugs and alcohol, I said, right. this is way better. Right, 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 <laughs> right of course. Less calories. Right, right, right. So that's really like my now. The cause. Yeah. And the cause was love, self-love, lack of love, lack of... Who knows, you know. right? I mean, what we know is, is that, here we go with the saints again, from Penn State to the state pen, <laughs> from Park Avenue to the park bench, right? Like addiction doesn't, you know, discriminate, right? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. but we also know that there are families where like the kids in theory had the exact same upbringing, pretty much the same environmental yeah, input. Yeah. And one person could suffer from addiction and the other doesn't. Yeah. So sometimes there isn't like yeah. massive cause. Usually there is. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I was, I suffered from this thing. I know my grandfather had it. He was nice enough to give it to my mother mm. and my mom gave it to me, but luckily she found help earlier than he ever could. And, and then I found it earlier than her. And now my son, who's four, God willing, will only be a respectable amount of fucked up. <laughs> right, right, right. But it took generations. Just enough. Yeah. <laughs> Just enough to be interesting. But food's yeah. the first frontier, right? It's the thing that we first have access it, to. That's that's what I just want to get out there as often as I can is like just some awareness that there's addiction at play. There's addiction at play. This is Richard Rohr. He wrote a beautiful book called Breathing Underwater, which is about the 12 steps. He goes, everyone's addicted to their own way of thinking, mm. which is just brilliant. So nobody, it's not the addicts are over there and we're over here. Everybody's addicted. Yes. And then food is just like, it just never occurred to me growing up in the 80s that that, that was a thing, that like eating six bowls of cereal, I thought that was like I was a champion or something. Yeah. You didn't realize that you were trying to almost, um, is the word tamp? tamp down yeah, your tamp. feelings sure. like you want to weigh them down you want to push them down and and getting honest and curious about what is it that's so unbearable mm. and it's hard it, it's like luke going into the cave you know in star wars and he sees the darth vader helmet with his face in it but we have to do those journeys instead of eating the whole bag of cheetos and then it, you know correct me if i'm wrong but then it's also like and if you do eat a whole bag of cheetos don't have that addict thinking where it's like, well, now I'm on a bender. You know yeah. what I mean? Sometimes mistakes or whatever, whatever you want to say happen. Yeah. But black like, keep out going. and eat a dozen donuts, which I do. Not yeah, a yeah. dozen, but yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, I have my moments for sure. It happens. But I don't get black and white because addicts can be very black and white. And you go like, well, now I'm a, I'm an eater again. And it's like, it doesn't have to be that way. You can stop and breathe and, and call somebody yeah. and remember your support. Yeah, it's always, you know, um, I don't think, I leave God. God doesn't leave me. Like, I can always sort of go back mm. at, in any moment. And, you know, when I'm in, and when I'm really, and, and I don't, again, I don't want to make it sound so, uh, what would, religious, I guess the word would be like. Sure. I, 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 you know, there are times where I'm on that freeway and like, I'm in God cruise control, right? I'm just doing for others 
and I'm not overly worried about anything. And I'm just like, I'm on it. And then I see an exit for money. And I go, mm. God, trust me. Yeah. I gotta go do this. Yeah. It's gonna give me a little bit more security. Yeah. I'll get right back on the freeway soon. And wow. and the universe goes, mm-hmm. Yeah. And like, and that's usually where it leaves me. But I think you're right. I think as kids, we're born mm. without control. We're a victim to our own circumstance. And uh, you know, food is a celebration. It's also something you do when when things are low. It's something you do when you're bored. Yeah. And I just didn't eat chocolate like my fellows. I overdid things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and but to your point, all that addictive stuff, it it kept me safe as this kid who at my default was too sensitive for this world. Yes. I always say I was I felt like I was born without the same manual that everyone else got at birth. Mm. That like I didn't have the same suit of armor. Man, you will. Dad. Dad. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, you know, the, I, I hate to say I it. I didn't get the man. You all. <laughs> That's an even better one. Giannis Papas made that joke too. No. Oh, yeah. He's like, I was like, you know, I always just felt like I didn't know how to traverse the world and like all these things. He's like, yeah, that comes from a dad. <laughs> He's like, dad. you mean a dad? He's like, a dad does that. I'm like, Giannis, you're right. True though. <laughs> but yeah. pain recognizes pain. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you're looking for that control and the <laughs>, laughs and eating. Like what a big epiphany for me was like, I like guaranteed experiences mm. and I like the arc of a, of an overeating experience. I like the hope that maybe this time it will be awesome. Yes. And I like the crash that it didn't work. And I even like the recovery. Chelsea Peretti helped me understand that it was very normal to binge on alcohol and then have an incredibly healthy day the next day. And she was like, that's, that's kind of classic addict stuff. And I was like, What? I'm huh. killing it. Isn't it great that I get up and go for a run? And she's like, it's just, it's like a cycle. It, it, I, I don't know if she said this, but she helped me realize that I was in a cycle yeah. uh, of that sort of thing. I, I noticed it in my, shout out my wife's siblings who after a hard charging night at the bar or whatever, cause they're like in their twenties and early thirties. So it's still like very acceptable and they'll have like, you know, a, every now and then they'll have a hard charging night. I can almost guarantee I'm like, I'll, I'll say to my son, I'll be like, your aunt's going to come over with donuts this morning. <laughs> I know yeah. it at like 7 a.m. almost to be like, I won't, I won't be held down by my night of debauchery. Yes. <laughs> like I'm a good person. That's right. You and those donuts are good. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. yeah. Where are you with God now? We only have a little time here. Sure. But um, I got to get going. <laughs> I really want, I'm not tough enough to, would that have been a pretty good mic drop moment if I like really cut it off? <laughs> I, don't, I mean, it wouldn't be forgettable. <laughs> Fair. You know, it would be unforgettable. That's Solid. something. And people would be like, did you see that? I've done enough work on myself. I'm good with being forgettable. Let's chat. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Forgettable is where it's at, actually. It's hot shit. It's hot shit. I'm not Barack Obama. No. <laughs> You're not Beethoven. No. We're going to be forgotten, it's, and so oh, are you. And so is Beethoven. Yeah, but it's going to take way longer. But, it's going to take know, an asteroid. There's like one every generation <laughs> that will be remembered. Yeah, and even that won't be. Kevin Hart is the man. Yeah. Maybe won't be remembered in 100 years. Maybe. I, no disrespect to Kevin, I would take man. all of us, all the comedians, who is talking about George Burns, you know what I mean? It's the greatest. Yeah. And now you say, see, George and, see, he was a duo. It doesn't matter. That's my point. Yeah. Shecky oh. Green. Just in the way, here's one that I like. It's Eckhart Tolle. The way you feel right now is how you feel about your life. That's it. This feeling. How mm -hmm. do you feel right now? Can I tell you something else? Yeah. I've started exercising. I think it's just spring. I, I, I'd, I bet you could track my cardio with the seasons, mm. like the winter, I'm just like, I don't know, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Then the spring comes and I'm like, I love it. Why do I ever not do this? But I've been exercising. Uh, we have a Peloton, mm. uh, peloton.com slash weird. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> but I've been just doing 20 minutes on it every day and loving it. And so much so I think I'm addicted now. I, I, I might be speaking too soon, but here's the moment. And I just, I want you to speak to what gives you this feeling. So it's really a question, but I noticed that when I wake up in the morning, one of the first things my brain will say to me is, what are we worried about? Mm. And it wants an answer. It doesn't, it doesn't, it goes, we have to worry about something. 
And it, it's almost like I have a hat hook in my mind. And there's just, ever since I've been a kid, there's always been a hat on that hook. Yeah. And nobody ever said like, do you need a hat on that? Uh, surely they have, but I mean deep in my unconscious. Yeah. So if I'm really quiet, I can hear it go, what, we need to be worried about something. And since I've been exercising 20 minutes, first thing in the morning, but really sweating, like to, to exhaustion, basically. Yeah. Um, now I get a voice that goes, or maybe we don't. That's right. And it's so weird. It goes, instead of something, have you tried nothing? That's Meaning right. not an answer, not a fix. I'm not even giving you a solution or a mantra. I'm just not adding anything to the already empty space that's doing just fine. Does yeah. that make sense? Oh, yeah. Spe what does it make you think of? A number of things. That, uh, did you hear Seinfeld on Tim Ferriss' podcast? What's the deal? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, poor Jerry. The mind. Um, the mind. The mind <laughs> is mind. like your boss. <laughs> but you can't fire it. You ask for a raise, it says no. <laughs> Dopamine's right at the right level. <laughs> Uh, what did he say? <laughs> he basically just said, uh, he's like, your mind is an ox that needs a plow attached. Oh, wow. He's like, I've never seen an ox in the wild, but I imagine they just kill themselves. <laughs> like <laughs> they need, they're just looking for a cliff. It's too much, <laughs> yeah, yeah, too yeah. much energy. I'm an ox. Yeah. Give me something to plow. He's like, you got to put another quote of his on Howard Stern. He said, find the torture you're comfortable with. I saw that one. That was good too, but it's the same yeah. thing. And so you, you Pelotoni every morning is like, uh-uh, not today, mind. You're not fucking in charge. It, buddy, I'm a little tired today because I went to bed around 1230, but I woke up at six and I, can you, you're, I feel like you're here for this. You're okay with this. Yeah. Meaning you're just a loving person. So you'll <laughs> allow the slight brag, but I, I, I say it most of the time I don't feel this way. This morning I woke up at six and I was like, what, what are my options? My daughter's sleeping next to me, Val's sleeping next to her. I'm like, okay, maybe I could go back to sleep for 45 minutes. Right. Is that really, is that really anything? Or get up, Peloton, before your body even realizes that it's tired and hungry. Yes. Just do it right away. Buddy, I did that. Cold plunge. Yes. Hot tub. Yes. Pool. I go back upstairs to take a shower. They're still sleeping. I feel like fucking Robin Hood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the Fox one. Yeah. The animated Robin Hood. You are showbiz's like Jocko Willink. <laughs> <laughs> I heard you call your dad. What is the word you used about your dad? A raconteur. <laughs> raconteur. I felt, like, I felt like I should have dice in my pocket. <laughs> yeah, you're showbiz Navy SEAL. And they were still sleeping. And I'll say out of the other side of my mouth, is there anything more annoying? I love Tim Ferriss. Yeah. But if you're not in that way and you listen to Tim Ferriss talk about a morning like that, you're like, fuck off. Like, it's so disheartening. Right. So I'm just saying this in celebration. Finally, I, I had a, a Tim Ferriss morning. Yeah, you beat up your brain. I and beat it up. Yeah. I put a plow on the ox. Yeah, the pain this cave. Pain cave? The pain cave. It's what like ultra marathon runners talk about like, I'm in the pain cave and I'm aware of it and I know it and I'm not going to be dictated by this pain. Yes, pain cave. my body will give out eventually and hopefully I stop maybe a minute before that. But like pain uh, is familiar. I know this feeling. It doesn't scare me. That's what's been helping me with Peloton is, is I know it's a video. Yeah. And there's something kind of sad about that, I guess. Maybe I should be with friends. <laughs> but it takes too much effort to go like, let's all go bike riding. Crazy. When I, whenever I wake up, <laughs> yeah, crazy. If I'm in the mood, nah, dangerous. So I have a video, and it's a little black mirror, but the person in the video is, you know, months ago, years ago, saying, "Don't give up," and it works. Yeah, they go like, "I know it hurts," and you're like, "Is this sweat or tears?" Yeah, I cry a lot on the on the Peloton. I yeah. do. I I can't get a full tear going because I'm too Irish, but like I'll get like an emotional <laughs> response, and I'm like. And I love it. And I'm, I'm starting, does that relate? Does that unlock feelings? Oh, you? yeah. I don't, who is selling fitness to us? The wrong people. Gym teachers, mm. fucking Michelle Obama. Nobody's <laughs> telling us the truth, which is like emotional freedom, psychological wellness, pain cave. That's fucking, that's great marketing. 
I had to yeah. go to podcasts to find this shit. I mean, it should be on the food pyramid. I think uh, you know. I'm sure you know uh, Alain de Botton. No, but I'll have one. It's fun. is it a soup with cheese on it? The best. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? He's like a modern day philosopher and and does a lot of podcasting. But he just talks about how we're all taught hygiene from you know my son's been brushing his teeth since he had teeth right yeah. so like he's been taking a bath since you know a week after he was born like all these things yeah we don't teach mental hygiene we assume that you're just born with it and it should just be there wow and like if we really made a point at an early age it's what i give my son now of just like you've been on that ipad too long there's no way you're going to be in a good mood I mean, without listing them, but all of the fucking things going on in the country, how many of them are like, we're not meeting our psychological needs, yeah, communal needs, personal needs, interior reality needs. Like there's isolation, there's depression, there's anxiety, there's dread, there's despondency, there's despair. Yeah. And these things have cures like, not cures, they have treatment. Treatment. It's a way better, because they are illnesses. Mm. But we were worried about tartar. I look. I'm all about brushing. I'm not all about brushing your teeth. I, I hate brushing my teeth. But like, I, I'm just glad you're getting this out there because nobody's really explained to me. Like, if we all only ate uh, fried chicken and only watched uh, TV alone in a dark room and never saw sun sunlight. Yeah. Drew Huberman <laughs> told me get sunlight first thing in the morning. DH. Never got DH balance. <laughs> never got sunlight. Never got fresh air. Never got community. Never did acts of service. Ne never did esteemable things. Never believed in something outside of myself. Never participated in something outside of myself. Never gave of myself. Never became vulnerable to ask if anybody needed a ride to the airport. Never took care of my body so I can maybe have that feeling that maybe I could be of service. Whatever it mm. might be. None of that was taught, and then and we're watching what happens. I always think about the Black Mirror, where the, everybody's in a in a uh, a cell basically, and every wall of the cell is a screen. And guess what? It's not just titties and jizzing. It's not right. I, I know that's a funny way to say, it, but it's not just feeling pleasure, whatever pleasure might be. Yeah, Mark Maron says cake and coming, cake and coming. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's better. Good. It's not, and that's what I was just talking to somebody about ChatGPT. One of the things it was Kenneth Pattengale from the Milk Carton Kids was at uh, my Largo last night and we were talking about, I'm, I'm a, a, an AI optimist. I think it's going to be incredible. Uh, obviously it's a little scary, Me but too. so is every huge change. But I'm also like, I think this is going to be huge and big and strange and all the things. Yeah. The risk is what's going to happen to the Kenneth Pattengales that were so bored that they were just playing a record over and over and trying to copy a lick on a guitar over and over and over. Like when you can just ask a thing to cheat for you and yeah. write it for you or think it for you or process it for you, the cake and coming starts to look like the point of life. But I was thinking about it on the drive in. I, I remain optimistic. Human beings will never underestimate human beings potential to get bored, meaning they'll get so bored that they'll want a new pain cave. Right. Computers are doing all this. Well, I can do this. Like we'll, we discover ways we build roller coasters for fun. You know what I mean? Like right. somebody was like, maybe a magical town where a mouse is the mayor. <laughs> like we do crazy shit because there's something, there's a spark in humans that go, I don't care what tools are available. You know what I mean? Yes. Like the G Jim Gaffigan bit, I I'll find a way to challenge myself is the other side of that. Jim Gaffigan had a bit about the technology of umbrellas. Like the first person that had an umbrella, it's like, oh, you're too fancy to get wet, are you? <laughs> like it's every technology is like, How's this going to ruin everything? Human beings will always be unsatisfied, and that will lead to more expansion, more innovation. It's the best. It, just to show you that money really doesn't make you happy is how much Elon tweets, right? You will always be dissatisfied. <laughs> You're just a real Hadouken, you know that? <laughs> Thank You're you. a real red fireball. Thanks, Back babe. when it was random. <laughs> oh, the red one? <laughs> You're a sparkly little boy. That's what I'm saying. That's what I mean. Your mom was right. She was. All those fucking. Finish the joke. That's great. <laughs> uh, we'll close out the joke. Woman wants to get breast enlargement. Dr. Goldstein says you don't have to go under the knife. You could just do this. And if you get bored, go. Mary had a little lamb. So one day, a month later, her bust has grown. She's walking through the mall going, Mary had a little lamb. Guy sees her and goes, Hey, you're a patient of Dr. Goldstein. She goes, How do you know? He says, Hickory dickory doc. <laughs> Worth it!
it. Physical punchline. It's so good. Hickory dickory dock. <laughs> it even rhymes with cock. Like, it's great. You're welcome. Thanks, Mom. She's alive, but I don't know why I looked up. She's up there. <laughs> she watches from the rafters. All Some people watch cl clippings and yeah. stuff. She's up there. She's up <laughs> She's there. She's my backup. Um, thank you, Josh. Thank you, man. Such Give a fan. Give me your YouTube moderator. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Give me your team. I, yes. As a thank you, give me your tip. Yes, As my honor. Thank you. No, I thank you. Um, and thank you for doing it. And I really am embarrassed about our first meeting, well, but I'm glad we got a, a round two. Me too. And I have a, I have a new podcast. I hope you'll come on for only 45 minutes and then I'll come on and anytime. do a hard out. And as a joke, <laughs> the good guys. I won't leave for three hours. <laughs> good. It'll be we're the ready. longest. <laughs> I don't know if I can set the record. Who's the record? No, we're, and uh, what I should have done better yeah. is say, I'm not crazy. <laughs> this will take an hour ish, which All is all yeah. we need to know about that story is I don't remember. Remember it. That speaks to the state I was at. Solid. Just drained and dead. <laughs> and I won't forget this. Me either. There it is. Thanks. Would Steve. you say keep it crispy? I point to that like you need to read it. <laughs> but it's how we end. Keep it crispy. Will you say it like Casey Jones from Ninja Turtles? Because I watched that with my daughter. Really? Oh my God. I think it's one of the coolest things you've done. Whoa. Keep it crispy. Thanks. And you and you get with Raph. Yeah. And you fight. Yeah. That show's good. It gets too dark for four-year-olds, season three. Yeah, I could see that. Season three, it takes a weird turn. It was a hit show. And then was they, it a hit? It was like crushing it. And they were like, new cast. We're like, what the fuck? We're, we're doing yeah, well. Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah. Because it wasn't at Sean Astin and then it wasn't Sean Astin all of a sudden. It was him and... Um, uh, They're all J perfect. Jason Biggs was Leonardo. They're all perfect. And then it was, and then he was, and then it was Seth Green, which was even, some might say... Better? Could, maybe. Well, you don't have to. No, but Seth's done the show and Jason hasn't, so we'll say it was. Better. It was better. I love Seth, <laughs> but it was great. Seth's the best. Yeah, it was great. It was great. That's a great show. Yeah, like if if I didn't have kids, I would watch Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Twenty, what year do you have to type in? Because there's so many different ones. Twenty twelve. Twenty twelve. Yeah. Twenty twelve. It's great. We have the toys. You have to go deep on eBay to find them. Wow. No Casey Jones though. Hook me up. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm working on it. She she uh, she's moved on. <laughs> <laughs> Can you introduce her to She's Blippi? Moved She's moved on. <laughs> oh my God, we're a Blippi-free household, and I'm proud to say that. Oh, we're not. Oh God, I got him to make a video for my son. If I'm I, doing well. You have to do. Uh, I got the Blippi's real Blippi. Going to do it? He did it. No, he made a video for my son. Oh, he did. Oh yeah, that's nice. It's great. I'm and, sure he's great. And I, it was like 75 seconds. I'm like, you get a video from us. Was that cameo? No, <laughs> not Blippi on cameo. You got Blippi on cameo. I got a, I'm not gonna stoop Blippi down to cameo. Blippi would crush it on cameo. Oh my! Have you ever in? Blippi would make two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a month on cameo. What's your rationalizer? Because I to had, not do cameo. Well, like because you know you get those dark moments and you start to rationalize. Like, You're on the highway with God. Yeah, <laughs> cameo. He's like, he grabs the wheel. Not fucking cameo, John. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I have no, I have no problem with cameo. No, me either. I'm not anti cameo. I just I don't want to work for cameo. Right. And then that's what I've been told is like it's fun, and and then your inbox fills up, it, God willing. Let's say that's nice, but then you have this other thing you have to do, and I'm very rarely in a mood to just do. And I wouldn't want to do it half assed. I wouldn't want yes. to do it like dead eyed and sort of sad and. You know what I mean? Julie, it's your bat mitzvah. Oh, sorry. I'm supposed to be Batman. Uh, sorry. This is where you're getting. <laughs> like I have the Benson and Hedges with the ash. It's I bad. don't know. Maybe it's pride too. Maybe you're like, it's, it's just, it is a little corny. There's a corn factor sure. you have to get over that you're like, I'll say hi to you for money. Like it, it right? Is that it? Yeah. Again, no disrespect to the. No, because who did it? Did Dice do it? Did he? I think there was someone who was doing it and was doing like nine minute cameos. And I was like, that's legendary. Andrew Dice cameo. <laughs> that's not good. a cameo. That's a lead. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't a walk on. You're now the second lead. It's in this, not a in cameo. This, that wasn't a cameo. <laughs> that's our website. Not a cameo. Not a cameo. It's for the people You're pleasing actors. I'm not. Yeah. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> this writer strike goes too long. We'll all be on cameo. Catch me that, on cameo. Isn't that why I'm going like, no disrespect, no disrespect, because I'm always like, in the back of my mind, yeah. there's a little parachute I'm wearing called cameo. <laughs> and see that Batman mask? <laughs> it's not cameo.com slash Pete Holmes. It's slash Batman. And it's just me being like, 
Happy birthday, Julian. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, like, it's a wide, that's a wide net. <laughs> Batman would kill it on cameo. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I want a cameo from Batman. Yes. Jesus Crow. So see you all in there when the strike keeps going. <laughs> <laughs> Love you guys. <laughs> Catch us on cameo. Catch us on cameo. You make me